Welcome to the March 6, 2024 Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioners meeting at 6 p.m. here at the Deerfield Town offices. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note while on an option for remote attendance it, um, being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on the agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. This meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record this meeting must identify themselves to the clerk, Trevor McDaniel, and provide their name and address for the record. Thank you very much. Um, first, a call to order. Any public comment? We have Rocky and Fran here tonight, which is lovely. Um, and we also have John Pekarski. Um, who is talking about a flooding mitigation problem uh, 287 to 293 Conway Road. So John, uh, we had just had a conversation and so you know that um, the EQUIP program or the e, uh, Emergency Watershed Protection Program through NRCS is available. Okay. And um, the Conservation District is probably the best way to handle it. Okay. Um, and like I said, so I'll be glad to help you. I'm, I'm chair that district. So we'll be glad to help you because it's a little bit complicated to go through the town uh, as the sponsor for any of these programs. Um, and, then, and there's a necessary sponsor. It's a guarantee that you know NRCS's match is gonna be met. Okay. And it's complicated for the town to do that to, to take money and then pass it on and do all the legal um, stuff. Whereas it, the conservation district is set up with USDA numbers already and, and we can just um, pass through the, the match to the um, NRCS office in Amherst and, it, and it's just it's just a lot easier and less complicated. Okay. So you have Megan's, our admin assistance number. and I you do. And you have Bill Breed, the conservation district. I do. The conservationists yeah. up there. And, and you have my number. I do. And I do. so we'll, we'll figure out what is the best approach and um, to handle yours and Pauline's um, issues. Okay. And, and did you have any more questions on it? No, I don't. I don't. I came here just to uh, get this started and, and, to, uh, and to find out uh, what, uh, what I can do next and, and, uh, and we'll, we'll uh, continue from there, sure. John, yeah. I, I'll be glad to help you okay. and, and we'll, we'll walk through it. And, okay. and um, the, state, the state office for NRCS is right here in Amherst and, and the people are lovely. You know, okay. um, Darren Davis is a state engineer. He'll be out. Um, you did already have Bill come out and take pictures and stuff. So All right. sure. we'll, we'll, we'll get this moving. Okay, um, that's good. That's and good. Megan will be back from vacation at the end of the week. So okay. um, I, yeah. I would anticipate having some conversation next week, if okay. that's all right. Okay, sure, good. And good. We'll, we'll keep an eye out how much rain you get tonight. Oh yeah, okay. And that maybe we'll be able to document that as well. All moving right, ahead. sure, yeah, right, right. All right? Okay. Well, yeah. listen, thank okay. you. Well, thank you very much, folks, and. Nice to meet you, John. Yeah, same here, it's nice meeting you too, Tim, yeah, sure. We'll be meeting more. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you very much, yeah. Yep. Take care now. Yeah, uh, thank you, still, John. Still and I'm, 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 it is seemingly a little complicated, but it really isn't. It, the okay. people are lovely to work with. All so right. okay. We'll, yeah. we'll get going on it. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're more than welcome. Good night, okay. drive safe. Yep, take care. Have a nice evening, folks. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, um, Carolyn, what? Um, Christopher Dunn's coming. He'll be here in a few minutes. He's got a couple of things that <coughs> oh, are interrupting, but he's got an update for you guys. Oh, good. Okay. So in the he'll meantime, come on remotely. So. 
Um, in the meantime, why don't we um, go go uh, to the minutes? Did you have a chance to look at the minutes, um, Tim, from February fifth? Get passed on John here. Yep. Um, I will make a motion to approve the minutes of February 5, 2024, as written. I will second that. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Hilshey, aye. Carolyn Nessa, aye. Okay. Um, road damage uh, reports. Um, I don't really have a lot of more information on Hawks Road other, that, other than um, uh, they they are did some work on Foxtown Road so that they could work on the hill part of Hawks Road and that should hopefully they'll be able to continue that on um, tomorrow um, later in the afternoon tomorrow and Friday and and all next week I'm not sure if we'll be able to finish um, Hawks Road by then but um, John does have some contingencies to try to get that done by the end of the month. Uh, I, th I believe it has to be done by March 25th um, when the 30 days runs out for the emergency order. So we're working on that. Yes. Um, select board licensing authority acceptance. Um, I'm pretty sure that at some point we did, we did I this. I think we did too, but. In the early. 10. This was, yes, this it seems was like 2010 or 2000. I want to say it was right after the ABCC changed this requirement, which was yes. somewhere between 2010 and 2013. Um, but, but let's do it again. Yes. <laughs> so the select board acting as I would make a motion that the select board acting as a local licensing authority in accordance with Massachusetts general law, chapter 38, 138, section 12 votes to accept the provisions of the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 33B, to authorize Section 12 licensees to sell alcoholic beverages between the hours of 10 a.m. and 12 noon on Sundays, the last Monday in May, and on Christmas, or on the day following when said day occurs on Sunday. Basically, I think it's Memorial Day weekend is what they're talking about. So. All right. Um, so I make that motion, Tim. I'll second it. Uh, is there any further discussion? This this covers what we are assuming has already been voted on for more yes. than a decade. And the only reason I say that is because I was thinking about it because Bernie, I remember Bernie brought this up. We had this come up because of Chandler's. Um, we also had it come up because of the Deerfield, the Deerfield Inn. Inn, right? And uh, so yeah. I know that we did vote it at some time, but I guess since we can't find it, we better do it again. All right, so all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, all right. Thanks to Chris for drafting that up for you folks. Um, well, we could do the we could budget is going to be a lot how about the um dot um routes five and ten intersection pre-design i think that was one of the things that christopher dunn wanted okay. to discuss with you all right um if we're gonna move around we could Well, we could do uh, Chris Curtis. We could do Chris Curtis. So we did receive a resignation from Lynn Rose um, from the Open Space Committee. And it is the Open Space Committee. Um, so there's two things. You've got Open Space and you've got the Open Space and Rec Plan Committee. So Open Space Committee, I, um, Lynn has resigned. She sent a letter the other day. Um, that frees open us that frees up a spot that chris curtis could fill since he's interested in that position so um did she submit it to the town clerk she did okay perfect she so did. she's already yeah um, i saw that through the email um so that's done um and thank you lynn for years of participation i really appreciate that um and i certainly understand when time gets tight uh so i make a motion that we appoint chris curtis to the open space committee and the open space rec planning recreation they've actually finished it 
it's kind of like a subcommittee. It's not officially a subcommittee, but it's kind, it acts kind of in that manner um, because you need to have a group that covers the mechanics of what open space and farmland and all it's, that is. It's so a there hoop was that we have to jump through. Yeah, it's kind of a hoop. But if you want to, I I would say appoint them to both. I don't know that open space and the rec plan committee is still meeting. I know that open space is meeting. Okay. Well, that's what Julie Caswell has been shepherding is a lot of that work. Okay. Well, let's do the open space committee, and if necessary, the open space rec plan planning committee. committee planning committee. Perfect. Are you going to make a second motion? Are you going to do this no, together? No, together. I'll second it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, Sorry about that. No, no, that's fine. We do need to consider updating the special municipal employees list. I noticed, I went back and looked at it after Chris Curtis asked me a question. I don't think it's correctly referenced, so open space needs to correctly be referenced. And we need to include the updated list of committees. Okay. So um, the form we usually send is one that identifies a policy, and it basically says we're outlining all these committees as you know, naming them special municipal employees, because you name the committee, not the people. Um, but we've had up, we've had committees created. So I'd like to be able to present a list to. The select board at the next meeting so that we can do that pat kroll and i were researching that last week um i just noticed there is one more thing we can do um i just had it here it's the oh here it is um notification of the art uh d2 r2 recreational yes. bike mm -hmm. road um i they've been doing this for quite a while and and we have um it's a wonderful thing and i uh, as a fundraiser for the Franklin Land Trust, and we haven't really had any issues. If no, the only thing, I honestly don't remember if I sent it to John. Usually, we, John reviews it, but I can't remember if he sent me an email about it. So, usually you approve this subject to whatever the requirements for public safety are. Well, this is for Saturday, August 17th, 2024, and I would make a motion um, subject, of course, to any recommendations from John Pachorik, our police chief, um, that we approve this for August 17th, 2024. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank and, you. Yeah, and so just see if John if has anything he wants to say. Um, okay. Um, well, uh, we could go back to select board at Rep announcements i um we had an ma mma meeting uh that was very productive and very interesting on friday um this past week there's a lot of things that we need to be proactive on one of the things that did happen that was very discouraging we had a hundred and more than 181 small towns rural towns um I think there was over, it was around 205 towns had signed on to this bill, Senate um, Bill 2388, House Bill 3567 for sustainable rural f school aid, and it got killed this past week in committee. So it didn't get sent to studying, because that's kind of like a graveyard. Purgatory. Yeah. but. Um, it's going to take a lot of effort to resurrect it and get it passed by the end of this, this, this session. And if it doesn't get done by the end of this session, which is basically the end of the fiscal year, um, we have to start all over again, which is really discouraging because we've had statewide, so much effort has been put into this and we had statewide re support for this and this would give us more funding for our rural schools that have essentially been $30 a year per kid, which of course doesn't cover anything at all. So um, that was very discouraging this week. So it's um, not fully funded by any stretch? No, no. It, what has happened um, in my time as a select board is that the state has um, gone from the mid 30s percent of supporting 
school costs to less than 20%. And um, that 20% is with the escalation of education costs is, is really minuscule. So it's a combination of prices going up over the last two decades and then as a share of that price, uh, the cost per student, the state has really been negligent. So we're still working on it. It's just a lot of effort that was hopefully very successful and looked like it was going forward and it got canned. Okay, did you have any, did you have any other announcements, Tim, that you wanted to talk about? Um, just to, we continue to work with uh, Casey and trying to um, get some general contractor quotes for uh, working on the kitchen in the temporary library space in the future senior center area of the 1821 building. Mm -hmm. um, town planner and I are gonna have a conversation with the owner's project man manager for uh, to have a discussion about 1888 building and uh, may have some news on that to share next week. Um, and uh, I think that's about it. Okay. Um, Board of Health um, announcements. The only, the only thing I just want to say is that um, if you're over 65, the new recommendations are that you, if it's been more than four months, since you've had a COVID shot, uh, the new updated one that was available this fall, you might want to get another one. However, we would inc because there's tends to be a peak in the winter, which we're coming off of now, and then another peak in the late summer. However, the CDC is in the process. Of uh, or the federal government is in the process of reviewing a new updated COVID uh, shot that will have different strains that are circulating, will prevent an infection or re reduce the impact of the infection um, on what's circulating now. And that supposedly is going to be available in September ish, October timeframe. So if you feel, if you're really immune compromised, you probably would want to get a shot in the next month or two if it's been more than four months since your last COVID shot. But if, if you are not going to get one and you're thinking of it, hold off until the fall because it's better to have a new one. The combination flu COVID shot is still being looked at, but it's probably not gonna be available for another couple of years. So you're still gonna to have to have your flu shot in the fall for what's circulating, potentially what's circulating, and then another, you'll have to have another separate COVID shot. And it looks like it's gonna be separate again for another few months. But the immunity from the, those COVID shots is not lasting for older people as, as well as it f for younger people. So talk to your primary doctor if you have any more um, questions because you know some of, the, some of the discussion is very confusing. Um, Christopher Dunn's here. Oh, good, Christopher. Um, hello, you have, you're gonna update us on some issues? Hold on. Send him a quick text. Um, he may have hopped on and gotten pulled away. I just noticed that his camera isn't on, but he's there. So um, in the meantime, I have a question for you. Did he do this? this um, going well? through the agenda. Yeah, that's what this is. Yep. The, are we going to have quorum? sort of as a preview of our, your discussion about the warrant and the uh, budget, are we gonna have quorum on Monday to discuss the select board budgets? I have an update for contracted services. Um, so I was planning on being there Monday. Okay, all right, because I have a copy for you guys to talk about. If you want me to go over it tonight, I'm happy to do that. Um, the reason I'm asking is because if Trevor's around, and Trevor will be late tonight, he has a school committee meeting, um, 
but if Trevor's around, then you guys could all review it and be able to, you know, discuss it with finance committee. There is an increase, but I do have a stable number for our IT managed services. Um, so I can explain that if you want. I just wanted to ask so that I know for next Monday. Okay. Okay. Um, is, is Christopher there? Or oh, maybe he called in? Is that Chris' number? No, that's a different number. Okay. Oh, okay. Is, is Chris here? Can he hear he us? He is, but I don't see. Maybe we pass that one until he texts me. Okay. Because I texted him, but he hasn't responded to me yet. Okay. Um, well, let's go to the warrant then. The warrant articles. Do you want me to go over the warrant with you? Yes. Let's go over the warrant. Okay. So, because Val's not here. So, um, is yeah. she coming on late too? No, she's she's not supposed to be here till six thirty. We still oh, have okay. ten minutes. Okay. Well, maybe I just um, maybe we just go to the employment and other policies. I can give you a brief preview of that. Um, okay. So there's special event regulations which is a request that I received from one member of the board that I discussed with council. And this could be, lately we've had a lot of events that have started to come up. So we've never had regulations for this, but there are other towns that do similar things when they have a number of events, anything that has an impact on the roads and stuff. So I discussed it with council and she made a suggestion that perhaps a regulation would be more effective um, for the select board as the overseer of roads to consider. So I have a copy. I would, this would be a good opportunity to just, you folks to read it first and then maybe we consider um, the process for adoption if there's something, if you would like to pursue it. And there's, a, there's actually an outline of, and a timeline that you have to follow for that because it's a roads regulation. But that would be something that maybe you could take up at an up upcoming meeting. Okay. Um, there's also an employee reimbursement policy, and this had come up at a finance committee meeting. Um, they asked if we had something written. And I think there was, at one point I think we had something but I went back and I looked and I found some language for both Deerfield and when I worked in Ashfield, we had one as part of our financial policies. Um, it's not final and in fact, I would like the board to, to sort of take a look at it and give me comments individually if you have any questions. Um, but certainly it's something that finance was interested in seeing whether we had, so I thought, at some point we have to have this anyway and we could incorporate it into a policy manual or you could incorporate it into a financial policies. You could put it either place. But it would alleviate that question of how the town reimburses for certain expenses. Um, and it's been vetted by council, just in case you wanna know. So is you this, could take a look. Is this the one that talks about um, reimbursement for food while you're Yes. Away? Yes, that's exactly what it does. It outlines several things that can't be reimbursed, some of which are in um, which we knew about already. DOR yeah. Yeah. guidelines, but there are other things that are actually true policy that the board could decide. Um, and it is something that would be interesting. It, we really should write it down. That was part, uh, kind of the, the impetus for me checking it out. Because why, don't, why don't we put it on the agenda for two weeks from now to actually vote on? Okay, um, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied that we have enough to talk about. Yeah, I, I only had one question. Um, sure. Had they, had council, it's very specific about breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm -hmm. um, and I wondered, does that mean that, that, uh, in, that elected officials and employees who are traveling on town business are gonna have to still continue to have receipts or would it make more sense to have a per diem um, that just says this is the number you eat breakfast lunch and dinner but this is all we're going to give you month for we could do per diem that's what yeah. I was looking for was a was a I didn't find language for per diem but I can ask and I had checked a couple of other towns 
I could certainly ask because that is a consideration. I know you would ask that. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be a straight up number. It could be a per diem. So if you would like me to find you some language to make yeah, that change, if, we if could do that. If that's possible, that would be great because I just think it'd be simpler. Um, and I know it would make life easier for Pat Kroll who has to try right. all no this receipt. stuff. <laughs> it <laughs> would. Um, Chris Nolan, why don't you um, give us an update on the Leary lot while we're waiting? Sure. So um, a little bit of an update on what's been going on with the Leary lot as of late. We are still waiting on the Federal Highway Administration to get that contract over to us. I've been in touch with Kobe from Congressman McGovern's office about seeing if any of the contacts that the office has at Federal Highway have or have any semblance of an idea of when we might expect this. Um, so that's in the works. In the meantime, we're working on obviously still making some minor tweaks to the design, hence why there was a planning board hearing that has been continued to the month of April. Um, we essentially are, I'm really trying to steer us in the direction of wrapping up um, because we're not going to be able to make many more changes if we want to get this rolling and be shovel ready and bid ready as soon as we receive the contract. So I'm trying to steer our consultants in that direction. Um, and that is essentially where we stand with things right now. Um, there's still that proposal for some sidewalk work along North Main and Elm Street, which um, I mean, depending on timing, I, I, I do kind of want to know the board's input on whether we would be looking to kind of expedite that, even if it means getting rid of that additional sidewalk work that had been planned to maybe handle that under a complete streets grant in future years. Um, or if we're okay with maybe waiting a little bit longer to, to get this bid ready and really making sure that we get those extra elements in. I, I want to know your priorities here. Okay. Well, I want to move forward as soon as possible. Okay. I mean, so the question, I, can you just uh, flesh out the, the thing about the extra sidewalks? Do you have specific extra sidewalks we're speaking about? Yes. So uh, thank you for asking. That's a good question. So the, the sidewalks that we're talking about that weren't a part of the original plan, but have kind of come up in talks over the past month and a half mm -hmm. um, are a section along North Main Street south of the Leary lot heading all the way down to the intersection in front of Leo's table. Um, and then a very small section on Elm Street in that one beside the one particular building. So essentially going down to the end of Bueno Isano. Um, mm -hmm. And the rest of Elm Street will be left for a future complete streets project. So it's just that I would say a couple hundred feet Mm -hmm. uh, they're being considered, but uh, our architect has raised some valid points that we might have some delays on account of there not being a lot of good survey information on this particular section. So okay. um, I, I'm tempted to say that we might want to strike this all together from, from the plans for the, for the Leary Lot CFI grant, but uh, I, I did want to get some input from the board before I say something like that. What do you think? Case, oh. well. No, no. Um, I. I was just going to say um, it could complicate to your to your credit and to your point, Chris. It could mm -hmm. complicate things um, if there are issues. So maybe it would be useful. I'm just yeah. chiming in as a person, yep. not I, as I'm, the town administrator. I'm wondering if if it's possible to do it that separately. We, no, well, to do um, that as a what do they call it? When alternate one, an you know, add alternate, add alternate, so that if there's mm -hmm. money left over from the the grant we want to spend it and maybe we could do an ad alternate and you know it may still have the same problems but um just a thought at least I, you have the option right. in the bid process to yeah. do that he yeah he makes a good point yeah and, uh, yeah casey i'd like to touch base on that possibility with yep. you um I, yep. I think that would be good to see if that would work as a compromise um because yeah, i'm not I'm sure that would enable us to move forward with the yes. main design and keep yeah. the alternate on later, but. Um, yeah, yep. yeah, I mean, okay. I'm, I'm perfectly happy. I actually agree that the designer should be able to lock down pretty much. Um, and, you know, so we, we have a finished design yep. ready to go out. And uh, so if, if the, whatever's causing the, the uncertainty, you know, if we can resolve it, 
tonight. I'm happy to do that. If the okay. other alternate solution is a way to, are there any other pending items between? Um, so another pending item is the, um, I think you've, you've all been in the loop on the stormwater solution that we've been in discussion with the, the abutter Hamshaw lumber on. Um, as a potential option, there could be a stormwater cistern that could help to provide irrigation for the greenery on the Leary lot. Um, it was recommended that we also have a way to back this up with a municipal water source, which would involve piping water from Elm Street over to whatever would be feeding the greenery, which sounds like another complicating factor, but I, I, I did want to make sure that we considered it at least, um, but I'm, I'm perfectly happy to say that we want to strike that as well or maybe keep it as an alternate solution. I think it's better to keep it as an alternate solution. And see if we okay. can explore with Hamshaw whether they would uh, install, right. uh, you know, when they build their building, if they put an outside water source on the back of the building, mm -hmm. you know, and, but that's just a question. Yeah, they may not want to. Sure. So those were the, the biggest outstanding items, I would say. Um, Another one, we, we had, I had a conversation with Chief Pachurik yesterday about some recommendations for security in the lot and surveillance, um, particularly with the, the prospect that you can see in the, in the most recent design that's in your packet. There are, I think, let's see, yes, two emergency call phones. Um, we're, we're gonna be scrapping those overall. They're, they're being phased out in a number of college campuses and downtown areas because they're not generally used and can be very expensive to repair when broken. Um, something that uh, the chief looked much more favorably upon was uh, security cameras, but those would be, um, th those could be a later development. They don't necessarily have to be involved in the design right now. Um, so that's something that we could definitely look to get a quote for, maybe perhaps once the lot is built. Um, but as for right now, I. I think I've touched on all of the all of the outstanding uncertainties, um, so I, I appreciate you giving input on that. Thank you, thank you, Chris. Does um, anybody have any further questions? No. Oh, go ahead, no, Casey. I don't have any questions about the Leary lot. Thanks, Chris. Is, thank is, you. Thank you, Chris. Is Christopher Dunn available right now? He should be. Chris, Christopher, I mean. <laughs> I know. We have to remember that. I know, Chris <laughs> and Christopher. Uh, Christopher, are you there? Oh, there you are. Yeah, but apologies, I'm here. I had my hands uh, full for a minute there. Um, yeah, I just wanted to tune in um, to give an update on the Mill Village North Main uh, Route 5 and 10 intersection. Uh, I'm not sure if it, it already got mentioned at all on the agenda. No, we were waiting for uh, you. Perfect, well, yeah, so uh, we had a meeting with MassDOT on Friday. Um, they presented some ideas for ways to address the issues at the intersection. And we spoke to you know, some of the challenges we've heard from residents on it. Um, so long story short, it was really pretty, um, you know, pretty easy. Everyone's kind of on the same page. Um, you know, they're gonna, they have an internal process they have to go through to identify the most feasible solution for the intersection. Um, I put together a, a draft letter of support for you know, whatever that identifies as the best solution there. Um, and then I'm also going to be reaching out to a couple residents who took a particular interest in the, you know, the addressing of the con safety concerns at the intersection. Um, and we'll see if they can put together a, a letter on behalf of residents, you know, in support of addressing those safety concerns, because that was one thing that MassDOT mentioned would be extremely helpful in their process. Um, so yeah, I just, uh, I think we're moving forward on that. And I just wanted to check and see if anyone had any thoughts and uh, I'm not sure Casey if the letter got in front of folks but something to look at um, we do have the draft letter um, but Christopher I just had a question do you feel like it's worthwhile having um, the neighborhood or concerned citizens um, have a meeting here to talk about it um, or do you think feel like you are gonna have enough conversation that they will feel um, that they have input yeah, so uh, I reached out to, um, I'm, I'm blanking on Patricia's last name, uh, Patricia Taylor and Wayne Manley, who have kind of 
taken a lead in terms of the residents on Mill Village. Um, and I'm hoping to just set up something small with them this week, just to chat about, hey, here are some of the options we heard about from MassDOT. Um, and then maybe have them kind of run with it and say, hey, if you have other residents you know who are concerned about this, you know, invite them in and we can maybe set something up. Um, okay. And, you know, that could be a select board meeting or it could be something in a slightly different format. Um, but yeah, I think that would be helpful at some point. Again, the main thing that MassDOT asked for from residents was some kind of letter or petition that, you know, makes it clear that this is a priority for residents of the town. Um, could Christopher, could you just make sure that um, the residents feel that we are addressing it and that, that we are hearing their concerns? Because I, I know I got an email from Wayne and he had just requested that we, um, you know, uh, make them part of the, or allow them to be part of the process. And I, I have no problems with that. Um, yeah, I absolutely. Mean, I, I, I believe that MassDOT is going to come with some recommendations and probably community engagement is going to be a part of that process. But if it isn't, we should definitely make it a part of our own process um, and invite, you know, the people on North Main and people on Bill Village Road in particular, uh, make them aware of, you know, what potentially could happen there. Yeah, and, and I just, and just interested people. I mean, there's a lot of people that use that intersection would like to know what's going on. So, um, I mean, everybody that goes and visits the transfer station has to go through there, just about. Okay. Um, well, then I would make a motion um, to sign the letter from Christopher to MassDOT saying that we're really pleased that there is some attempt um, to, to address this safety concern. Yeah, that's the one. And I'll second that. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And I want to thank MassDOT for their willingness to, to uh, take this yes. on um, because it's been an issue for the community for a while. Decades. Yeah. Uh, I certainly uh, second that. Um, all those in favor? Did Tim Hilchey, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Good. Uh, all of a sudden, I realized we didn't vote. All right. Is there anything else you wanted to update us on, Christopher? Casey, I don't know if you brought up the uh, the shared streets project and the status of that. At this point. I haven't. I was going to ask you to bring it up. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, so we had a quick call today with uh, Denise, um, a couple folks from FERCOG, uh, and, and Casey, and I invited uh, Kevin to be on the call as well. Um, you know, two things. We were kind of going over the fact that <laughs> we've got that project almost ready to go out to bid, and then also uh, the North Main sidewalk improvement project about to go out to bid so um we were able to do some coordination on those two projects um i think you know one important thing to mention is that you know after the the park kind of fell through uh we've been casting about for ways to to still use the shared streets grant to improve some kind of crosswalks along north main um kevin pointed out that the the pleasant street crosswalk might be a priority um and we kind of had a chance to chat it over with burkog and kevin um, and it looks like that'll be a possibility. We're going to reach out to uh, Darius at the schools and also um, Chief Pachurik and just get his input. Um, and from there, you know, I think we're going to be able to work with FERCOG to get a bid out. And maybe it's, uh, you know, potentially it could be one package with both projects, but we'll I'll kind of defer to the experts on that one at FERCOG. Um, but yeah, so we're making progress and I'm, I'm confident we'll have, be able to get this done uh, with this construction season. Okay, that's wonderful. Um, I really appreciate you uh, following up on this and getting this done because people are certainly looking for uh, sidewalk improvements. Yes, yeah. and crosswalks. 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 Yep. And, and yep. Yep. yeah, yep. sidewalks have been yep. years in I had a conversation with Darius about it today. I know. Thank you. So, one thing that I, well, Christopher's still here, um, I didn't re really touch on it in the select board announce or announcements or whatever you call it. Um, Christopher and I are going to be meeting with um, uh, Dan Pallotta mm -hmm. and Rob Tedesco, Tedesco tomorrow in the afternoon just to begin a conversation. But I wanted to, I gave Casey a copy of this and you just something to, we'll probably refine this tomorrow afternoon to, to come up with a process to try and um, 
get moving again on the 1888 building um, because we may need to do that soon. Um, so I was just giving it to you tonight to let you consider it. And um, basically it's looking to put out a new, um, for the second phase of the first phase, which was design drawings, um, to, to consider trying to hire a, a more local architecture firm um, to take us through the next phase of developing the project. So um, I wanted to give Dan Pallotta and his team a chance to, you know, talk to Chris about it and uh, Christopher, that is, and uh, you know, give us their give give us their ideas about a deadline, a timeline, and and. I I think that's fantastic, Tim, because um, you know this has been delayed with uh, um, our earmark, federal earmark, and you know it. There is a. You know, we need to be moving forward in a way that's, you know, very cost conservative, <laughs> and um, but that we can actually have the project moving forward. And there are things happening to that building, like the gas leaks and yes, other things that we need to, you know, we really we just need to keep moving forward. So yeah. this is wonderful. So thank you, um, and thank you, Christopher, for um, you know trying to get this going again. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about, Christopher? No, I think I'm good. Thank you. All right. You know, actually, I had, um, were you able to um, think about the new DEI requirements for the 604B? Did you have any thoughts on that? I haven't had a chance to talk to you on that for. Um, oh, you know, you know, I'd have to dig up. Uh, you know, I took some notes. I cracked open their guidelines for FY25, and I took some notes. But I'm I'm not at my desk, so let me let me shoot you an email tomorrow once I'm back there. Okay, um, and, I, I, and we I, can I, discuss after that. It it seems like we're okay on River Road, and so I would like to move forward on the 604B, um, so we can have some really good designs and good. You know what are we going to do for River Road, and what are we going to do on, um, you know, the Wapping Road side of Pocumptic Ridge? So thank you. That would be great. Um, all right. So Val is in here. Uh, how about we go to the uh, um, warrant, Casey? Okay. So you have a warrant in front of you. And there's two copies. There's a copy with notes and markups, and there's a copy that's a plain language copy. And the reason I gave it to you that way is because the there are notes that I, I think we need to think about, but um, I also want you to be able to read it. It's sometimes easier to read if, it's, if you don't have the notes in it. But essentially what I did after last week's meeting, um, I moved the articles. Remember, we had talked about where you wanted article placement. Right. So what I did was I went back to the normal framework of the meeting, which includes going through the consent article, that's the reports of officers, elected official compensation, et cetera, acknowledgement of gifts, and then the votes to transfer to, from free cash for special appropriations, which include reserve fund, OPEB liability, and out of district placement or vocational education appropriations. Um, so those are back in place where they normally are. The next one would be the vote to address the spending limits for revolving accounts. And we also follow that with the classification compensation plan request for approval. So those are the first four articles that we've done in the past. So what I did was I moved anything that was FY24 back into that area just below compensation where we have an article to request approval to transfer from a stabilization account or otherwise provide funding for the extraordinary road and reconstruction and repairs that we did after the flooding in July, this past July. Which article number is that Article at? 5. Article 5, thank you. Um, 
And that's going to require two thirds majority. So that's identified. And I'm trying to go through and remember where I need to identify these things. Um, so I have an article for that. I also followed it with the rescission article, which is the request to rescind a portion or all of the borrowing authority for that, those road repairs. And that was a request you had made of me last week. Right. So those two things are together. Now, what I also did was I put a placeholder in in case we have an issue with the funding source for the match for the CFI grant um, and have to make some sort of adjustment from ARPA funds to a different funding so source. This is Article 7? Article 7. Okay. So I put a placeholder in. We're going to have to see. I do have to say Chris has been following this, and he doesn't have an answer, but he's doing the best he can to get one. So I, you know, credit to him for keeping up with it while we try to make adjustments if we have to. And so what would happen is, is if ARPA funds are fine, thanks, Chris, if ARPA funds are fine, then we could pass that over or eliminate it once we, if we are able to before the warrant has to be finalized or closed. Um, and then if we don't have an answer until after March 28th, then we leave it on and we would pass it over at town meeting if we don't have to make any changes. Otherwise, we have the opportunity to make the changes up until the 28th. Okay. The board could reopen the warrant. Um, so, so, the, so we uh, the March 28th, um, we have to just we have this to has to be closed and settled. The language doesn't have to be finalized, but the actual art articles have to be settled, um, which is a requirement in the bylaw. Okay. Um, it's got to be 30 days prior to town the only, meeting. The only reason. Um, because um, I'm trying to get the final road costs to Joe Comerford yes. and Nellie Blay so they can go back to admin and finance to see mm -hmm. if we can get another mm -hmm. round of funding from the last five million. But um, I'm not clear if it's going to be, we're going to be able to have final numbers by March 28th. That's the only. Right. So we can do the best we can. Yeah. I mean, okay. that's the reason when we talked about it last week, it made sense to just put a placeholder on there and do okay. the best we can. Yeah. So right. I tried to flesh out more of that language in Article 7. Okay. So Article 8 is the request to transfer from available funds um, a fiscal year shortfall for snow and ice removal expenses, which we typically put something in. Um, if we can't do, if we can't plan to do some sort of transfer from reserve, and I have an idea that Brenda and I have talked about. Are we about. actually over budget, though? Do you know? We, we are, are, but not by much. Yeah. So if okay. Brenda, excuse me, Brenda and I both have our fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. We had budgeted like around ninety something thousand for this. Yeah. Year, for yes. This fiscal year. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We nor we normally do that. Right. A yep. flat amount. And then if we have to, we fund a, a shortfall. So the article is there. We don't know what the sum of money would be. But in the event that it was advisable to transfer between accounts in the fiscal year, we could pass this article over. But it may be more advisable to utilize a funding source that requires a town meeting vote. Um, it depends on where all of the budget falls down in in the next few weeks, because yeah. we'll know more then. Yep. But the article's there. Um, Article 9 is a funding request to fund an unanticipated sewer bill, and I think I, I didn't bring my pen with me, but I have a clerical error in that. Um, it's an FY20, actually it's FY23, I think, for testing services at the old Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Facility. It is facility. 23, it's not It 24. is 23. So, yeah, there's a clerical error in that. but. I was, I was informed about that uh, before you closed the warrant last week. So this is just, I'll have to correct the, the fiscal year notification. Okay. Oh, you're, you're checking on the quantum, it is a quantum vote? Um, there may, it, so there's a different quantum vote for special town meeting versus annual town meeting for a prior year bill. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's four fifths for annual, but I, the reason there's question marks is because I know Lisa will correct me. I think it's nine tenths for a special and four fifths for an annual, but don't quote me. We don't run into it as often as well. We run into it, but 
it, like I said, it's different for annual versus special. Do you know how much the bill is? I don't. I can't. I don't remember. Kevin told me about it, but I don't think he told me what the amount was. Okay. I know it's not very much, but... But it is a prior, prior year fiscal, bear, fiscal yeah. year bill. So, yeah. And it, I give I um, Eric Meals a lot of credit. He's been following up on this and discovered that there was a mailing issue with the billing company. So okay. we're trying to correct that now. Um, so Article 10 is the vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $32,214 to a special fund established last year through the Acts of 2023, Chapter 77, Section 9, for the opioid settlement money. We received the money, and we didn't put it into the account, a stabilization account, because we were waiting to see what the state could come up with. They had promised to try to address this in a different, through a different funding mechanism, which was approved last year. So essentially, this article says that we're going to transfer this because it actually rolled into free cash. We knew we had to take it out. We just didn't know what the time frame for administration and finance on their guidance that eventually got incorporated into this, the acts of 2023. Um, so we left it there knowing we were going to have to take it back so out. So the auditors won't have a problem with that? No. This, okay. There is no, I've read the... you tracking it. Yes, we've okay. tracked it. Both Brenda and I have tracked it. So she's actually set up the special fund. But because it rolled into free cash, we have to have permission from town meeting. Okay. So that's, no, that's what fine. Article 10 is. Um, Article 11. Question about that in case somebody asks at the town meeting. Um, if we didn't get permission, could we use this money for anything? No. You have to get some sort of permission yeah, once yeah. it's funded. Right. I just wanted to make sure that we have the answer on here. Yes. <laughs> and so one thing that I did add into this article was language that was provided from council last mm -hmm. year that identifies the options to utilize the money. I don't know if the council's going to want to leave it in there, but I thought if nothing else, it tells people exactly what you can use it for because that's actually outlined in these settlements is there's specific things and and we're working with um in our public health excellence grant group to try to pool our money to make some worthwhile program yep. that will have impact on our community so we haven't decided what we're going to do yet but um anyway all right okay so article 11 and there is a notation in here, and I, it's the, note, the comment is actually on Article 11, but it pertains to the consideration of creating an article that would, if we had to fund a capital request from Frontier Regional School, we would need to create an article. I went back and I researched the last time we did this, and the placement was, between, was in this area. Um, so between general municipal purpose funding for our omnibus budget and anything that related to a special funding source or a special funding article. We had generally put these capital articles in that space for FRS, so the board could consider it. We, don't, we won't know until tomorrow because I think FRS's school committee votes on their budget and their capital requests tomorrow night, but I wanted to ask the board to consider opening and adding a placeholder if necessary. Um, and this would be, depending on how they wanted to fund this, we might have to add an article. If they decide to fund it a certain way, we wouldn't need to. We won't know more until after tomorrow. Okay. Though. I was just going to say, you know, the article doesn't really make much sense to me, but... No, that's a separate thing. This is just, this would, okay. so the note, the comment is we may need to add a capital okay. article for the fire alarm panel replacement project. Right. Um, I don't know what that's, whether we're going to have to do that. I won't know until Friday. Okay, so this may or may not. It may or may not be needed. And what okay. I would have you do, because I did confirm that council can join you on the 13th to go over the warrant at 5 okay. o'clock. She only has about an hour. So... Do you want to just make that a Zoom meeting then? Remote? Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Why don't we just make it a remote Chris, meeting? Chris, can you remind me? <laughs> March 13th start. needs to be a Zoom meeting. <laughs> yeah, we'll just make we'll it. Because Lisa will be Zoom. She so, will be. Yeah, so why don't, 
both of you, if if Chris, if you and Casey, if that's all right. Yeah, that's fine. We I had already also. talked to Chris about it, um, develop, starting to develop a an agenda for it. But if you want it as a remote, fully remote, that's cool. Yeah, we can let's do that. just because it, it can only be with. There's no sense in making it more than an hour. Right. Okay. So that would be my comment in case we had to do a placement of an article. Okay. Um, article eleven is the omnibus budget. Um, and this is the basic framework for the omnibus budget. The language that changed was the fiscal year notation. Okay. Article 12 is sewer enterprise fund. Yep. And we would, you'll see there's little spots where I say insert table so we don't, so I don't forget. Um, Article 13 is the request to provide the money to operate South County Emergency Medical Services. Mm -hmm. Um, Article 14 is to request a vote to fund the capital improvements plan for this, this upcoming fiscal year. We do have two FY24 requests that just came through. Um, would the board consider, if necessary, because we might be able to change the language to encompass both fiscal years, but if necessary, would the board consider adding an FY24 capital request that it's actually SCEMS? And you'll see it later, Carolyn, if I get a chance to mail it out, email it out tonight. Um, we have two FY24 SCEMS requests. Um, so we may need to actually put an article in for FY24. Okay. Um, would the board consider being, if we had to, I haven't talked to council about that. I kind of want to. I wanted to take your temperature on it. So is one of them a, a vehicle? Yes. What's the other one? It's the station alert system. And it, Josh is going to be at the meeting tomorrow to talk about it. That was, um, that was uh, actually reallocating funds? Yes. That, yes. But the vehicle purchase isn't? Is the vehicle purchase, I think, is retained earnings. Don't quote me, but yeah. I think it's retained earnings. Okay. I would have to go back and look. He's got it written down. Yeah, and I, I saw something from him. I just was refreshing my memory. Yeah, it's, it's on the second page of his request, I think. Um, and I did start to review it. I just didn't get through it before the end of the meeting. I was writing some notes for myself. So I just want to put that out there that we may need to consider um, adding an FY24 um, capital request because we do have two. Um, so is this like a supplemental budget? Sort of. <laughs> and we could put that, if you wanted to, we could put that capital article back up where the 24 stuff is. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that, if we had to add it? I don't think it matters uh, if this is a logical place for it to be. Just Okay. I, I think it's better to keep them together. Okay. To keep the confused. FY24? Okay. Whatever you want to do. No. Well, no, I meant the... I the meant the skims part. part. Skims yes. and skims. Skims and skims. Yeah. And, yes. and the other stuff, I don't see why. Yeah, because I don't think anything else is FY24 except that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's so. better to keep skims and skims. Okay. Yeah. It, makes pe it makes it less confusing for people to follow. Yeah, that's what I was okay. saying, basically. Works yeah. for me. Um, all right, so... And Capital will be meeting tomorrow at 5 to start talking about this. We've got at least three presentations ready, or three people that'll make, that'll discuss their stuff, their requests. Chris is going to be one of them. Chris Nolan. Um, the, only, the only thing, uh, the funding source for um, the alert system, it's going to be a permanent part of the building. So, so I was thinking it should be coming out of the rental Brenda and Josh have discussed it, and this is what they've decided to ask for, is reallocating for the, what was initially allocated for the exhaust system. Um, and Josh will explain that. Okay. So I think, right. I think it would be a good idea to let him explain it because yeah. he's got more experience at this than I do. I know. Um, I, I just felt it was, um, you know, the, rent, the rental income is for building anything to be related to yes. building and physical yes. stuff. And we talked and about it that. And it remains Deerfield's right. investment. And we so talked about that. The rent thing should But be he does coming. make a, I think he can make a good case for his perception of that. Yep. And so it's worth, it's worthwhile considering. Okay. No, that's fine. Um, all right. So Article 15, this is community preservation funding. 
Um, I don't remember. I don't think Kathy told me how many applications they have, but I don't know that. I think I know there's at least one. Um, I believe there's only one, and it may it may need to be pushed. To right. Fall. I'm not sure yet. I haven't. I do have a request from Kathy for a clarification from council, so I pushed that out today I, or yesterday afternoon. I haven't heard back though, and I told Kathy that, so she may be a little upset. Are they going to meet and make a decision on that before, whether it's going to be pushed out or used? This I don't year? know. Um, I know they have a meeting on the 13th as well. Okay. So CPC I, also has a meeting you, on the 13th. Could you um, follow up? Because we would want to know if we want to keep this in here or not. Yeah, I mean, they're meeting tonight. I, I thought you, they were meeting tonight. And they are meeting tonight, and they're meeting next and week. And they're too. meeting on, yeah, and I'm meeting with them next week. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, we'll I know we, one way or the other yeah. by the end of the month? I believe so. Okay. Yeah, I think so. All right. I don't want to have too many things to yeah. skip over. It just doesn't, yeah. it looks no, messy. Yeah, exactly. And one of the things that, would lean in favor of pushing it to the fall is that then um, it would avoid needing to put in another article that would say can we take the FY we give approval to use FY 24 uh, money that hadn't been put into the undesignated because you have to wait till July 1st right you have right. to wait until so, you close yeah, yeah. I'll let, uh, yeah so f just follow up on that Casey yep I just wrote myself a note. Um, all right, so Article 16. This is the request, and we can move this, but this is the quarter, this is the request to accept the MGL Chapter 59, Section 57C, which allows establishment of a quarterly tax payment system. And that would be effective July 1st, 2025, which is the fiscal year 26. And my question is, do you have an idea of whether you would like to move this to another area of the warrant or what do you think about that uh, it's kind of random right now because I wasn't sure what you thought I'm I'm okay with it where it is I just if we're gonna do this I think we have to have an informational night to explain some of these articles like this one mm -hmm. um, so it can we just take a time to look at um, our calendars and decide uh, what we're going to do um, for scheduling information night. Okay. Um, I think what might this. be useful is maybe we talk about it next week with the Finance Committee. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to want to participate, I'm sure. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, it's but I'm just night. looking yeah. at... Because we have a meeting on Monday night with them. Okay, so we have a regular select board meeting on the 3rd. Um, yep. And a regular select board meeting on the 17th. Yes. So I will tell you, hold on. Um, all right. You have the 3rd and the 17th. Personnel board has their hearing, and I will go over this a little bit in a little bit when we get further down into the warrant. So personnel board has a hearing on the 23rd for changes to the bylaw, which include classification and changes to the bylaw itself. Um, 23rd of April? Yes. Um, it might be worthwhile to try to do, I don't know where we're gonna be with the budget, that's my only quite my only concern is we may not be settled with the budget until the week of the 22nd um, and town meeting is the 29th so that gives us the 22nd or the 24th yep to talk about or the 25th the 25th is too late so I'd either want to do the 18th or the 20 or the 22nd for information okay. tonight. And then we just go over what we can go over. Okay. So let's, can we, um, Chris, uh, can, Nolan, can you um, take a look at um, the calendar for the 18th and the 22nd and just sort of pencil in um, a hold on those nights? Sure. And I'll for wait until they hear one or the other to cancel the other. 
Yeah. Right. And just check to make sure finance committee, they may be meeting up until the 22nd. That's all I, I believe that is their plan yeah. as of now. Yeah. So what we want to do is um, hold those two dates, I think. For Mr. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know that it matters necessarily to anyone, but I just want to mention that the 22nd is Passover. Oh, so oh, we yeah. probably so. might want to push either do it the 18th or maybe the 24th. I know the 24th isn't ideal. Uh, the only re I, I just get nervous about being it too late. I know. Yeah, I mean, the 18th is... The 18th, we could probably get through most of it. It's just, I'm not sure where the budget's going to be. All right. Well, we'll talk about, let's um, bring it up on Monday with the Finance Committee. Okay. We need to be strategizing on making sure that people have information. That's all. Whether we're, we have all the final numbers or anything like that, we can always update it. Okay. Well, it would have, you know, if we had a quarterly payment system, it probably would have um, maybe eliminated the need for a special vote. Uh, well, yes. I mean, that's one of the things we're explaining to people is that, you know, you know, the in the at the MMA um, breakfast meeting, they had that chart of of UGA, the right. local aid chart. We're almost up to the, the 2008 level, not adjusted for inflation, which means the dollars are still way behind. But it shows where the state government, you know, state local aid has um, fallen so far behind. Yes, and that and um, and as a result, who is who is paying more? The property tax owners have made up that difference since right. 2008, right. and and we're not even anywhere near where we were at the 2008 level when the when that right. dropped when so, UGA dropped right. So, I mean, people have to understand that it's not that anybody's mismanaging money; it's just that the state has really stepped back from supporting they communities. Have they have, yeah. and I think that's actually a good thing. I, I thought those slides were very informative. Right, I, I actually um, asked uh, and, uh, Adrian to send me the um, charts, and I was gonna send it to Chris to um, print out for the Finance Committee, because I That'd think be a great good, idea. I think it's a good, good background information to show people, because you know, most of the Finance Committee has um, not been on since 2008. Right. So they don't really have that perspective. And I know I talk about the school aid and all that over my period of time, but seeing it in the graph really explains why there is such a drastic difference in um, you know, what taxpayers have had that make up the difference in our operational costs. So anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely something we could add as informational. Yeah, okay, um, so sorry. No, that's, that's good information to have. Um, all right, so Article 17. This is the article requested by the trustees of Tilton Library to file a petition to make changes to their, to their trust and also separate out and re... And I'm probably going to mess this up, but this actually... It just corrects the situation. It corrects some, some issues that had happened in the past yep. between, you know, sort of how everything was. It just modernizes the uh, is there a, is there thing a, to do. Is there some editing problem here in the first sentence to see if the town, to vote to approve? Will vote to approve, yeah. yeah. So There's no comma. In, some of this is copied and pasted, yeah. so we haven't. F no worries. I was waiting to see what, what Lisa was going to say, and she's already taken a crack at part of this, so. I'll have to fix it. I'll, let me write myself a note. I'm writing myself notes about what I have to fix. Um, all right. Okay, so Article 18 is a personnel bylaw change. And I do have, and I said this in an email, um, I have a draft amendment that could be considered. The outline, I provided the outline of what it looks like to personnel board, and I will be sending that out to them by next week. 
what the personnel amendment would look like is it would change portions portions of the bylaw um, and it would include changes to the makeup of the committee for consideration and I say this broadly for consideration changes to the makeup of the committee um, pulling out the benefits and policies and identifying that they would be turned into a manual um, identifying the process by which policies would change mm -hmm. in a manual um, and one of the things that's an element of that is, is notification process because it costs a lot of money to do notifications when you make changes not only in the bylaws but it makes sense to um, do the notification changes because it does it is costly it is um, and the, everybody's adjusting that I'm right and we're state. even seeing these requests but, go to the um, go the to the only, states the only reason I'm questioning this now is is this something that we want to do in the fall because are you going to be rushing on this I have most of that documentation so here's the process and I discussed this before I received the language from council um, we are out of compliance legally with a lot of the state and federal requirements. And it is so burdensome to make changes to a bylaw rather than changes to a manual that if we don't do this and bite the bullet, we're not going to be prepared for some of the other issues that head toward us as, things, as we have to make adjustments from a human resources perspective. The other thing is, is we would create so what we would do is we can't make change we can't create a manual until we have approval from town meeting what we can do is we can say okay we're going to pledge to make a manual this is the outline you will see um we have draft language for those changes <clears throat> so i have draft policies not only do we have the template of what's in the bylaw but we have additional policies we can add like FMLA leave, parental leave, all of these things that have come up in the last 15, 20 years that haven't been included. But we can't finalize that until after we get a vote. So what we could do, and this is what I talked to the personnel board about yesterday was what we could do is be prepared to show people what a manual would look like and say to them, look, if this is approved, the process going forward would be the personnel board and the select board would address these changes, hold a hearing, and basically create the eff effective manual upon before July 1st. So it would go into effect July 1st. Um, that gives us a little bit of time to get it done, but it also creates a timeline that we can put this into effect. Uh, so you think you can get it done? I think I can get the substantial work done now if you want to put it off i just want to caution you that if you do that no we need to be mindful of the fact that we just need to get in compliance it's been a heavy lift for probably 10 years uh, well, i know no, bernie I know. was concerned about it and so was wendy i i and i I, I hear what you're saying if i don't think i'm going to be prepared i will let you know well, I just want us to make a decision by the end of the month. So yes. again, there's not something sitting there right. that we pass over. If if we keep this in, I need to know that you feel like we're going to get it done correctly and that people will stand up and be able to talk, you know, from the committee, we'll be able to talk at town meeting as to why, how it's important. It, right. And, and we, we need to be able to provide it. the comments that right. the select board also can speak to because right. you're a vital part of that as the hiring slash appointing authority. And I know, I, this is no question, but it's been outdated for over a decade, and I just want to make sure that now, we are addressing the thing it about a living document possible. is you can add things to it. You can make those changes. You want a framework okay. that complies right now, but you can make adjustments to that. Yeah, well, as long as it's not a bylaw that requires, you know. Um, That's the whole point, is right. strip the benefits and policies out of the bylaw. Right. It makes it easier to comply with the state's changes. Yes, and, and that's really the well, that's, the underlying I, piece I just of information. To make sure that people understand. Right. right, and that was the concern that the personnel board had. So this is what they said to me: is they want a sort of a compilation of what they could expect to see for policies um, by next week, so they can start reviewing them. They're going to have a meeting on April 9th to go over them, but they want me to publish a hearing okay. notice for the 23rd. So I have a hearing for personnel on the 23rd of April to 
formally approve this, which means we won't have it available. And unfortunately, because of quorum issues, we can't do it any sooner. Um, we only have three members, and they all have to be there for quorum. So we won't have the opportunity until the ninth to have them even look at this stuff, except in the background through their email. All right. And they can't deliberate. So we did the best we could with coming up with the schedule. That would mean we would have to include in the town meeting guide their recommendations. So put this on the agenda for the 20th to rediscuss this. Are we going to be ready? And, and before I forget this, um, Pat Kroll keeps sending out a friendly reminder that we need to finish up our... I'm working on so, it. She's, uh, she and I, I talked about it before the meeting. I wasn't sure <laughs> if a certain board was being implicated or if it was a gen general call for... So I actually, I called Carolyn yesterday and it, it came up for me because I realized personnel board hadn't done theirs. So I took a crack at theirs and gave it to them and Lewin's going to review it. I'm working on a rough draft, second rough draft. I have to handwrite it, Tim. And then I don't, have to put it don't in the. Don't bring it to me then. Nope, I'm gonna. I'm putting. No it, handwritten stuff. Nope, I'm gonna put it into the computer. <laughs> that is slow. The slowest part for me. It's faster for me to do handwritten rough draft. And then I am going to send it to you. Uh, I already told Casey I was going to send it to you to edit, and then you were to send it to Casey. Did or I agree? To you can. You can Did send it. You can send it through me or Chris, and we'll make sure he gets it. Just so there isn't a question about All right. I will yeah. send it to Casey. I don't know. Did you agree to that, Tim? I don't know. Probably in a fit of uh, in, I, yeah, I know. whatever. You were, <laughs> you were just going to make sure. You're just going to make do sure I didn't spell it. <laughs> See, I don't know. I, that. Do. I can't I will. answer that question. I, will. I, I, I look over. I edited Trevor's last year. Yeah. But I, it's just that. It's um, only five pages, right? Even though we did a hell of a lot. Um, no, I, I've cut it back down to three, and I'm trying oh, to get it to excellent. two. Excellent. And I'm trying to get it to two. But that's encouraging me to participate. There you go. Um, that's why I'm the hack and draft, slash. But it is. I know. <laughs> the hack and slash legal, can now start. It is on legal paper, so it's okay. two pages legal paper, mm -hmm. which, is which is my goal. Hey, at least it's not 19. No. No, it starts out. Or 13. Yeah. Like it my starts out very again. short. Wet. This year has been wet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what my start is. Yeah. Alouette. We are alouette. Right? <laughs> it started wet. It ended wet on December 18th. So, okay. Okay, so Article 19. This came out of a couple of conversations with CIPC. So last week we experienced a quorum problem. Um, and, and I actually, thanks to Kathy, I went back and I looked because personnel has the same issue. I look to see what the OML says about quorum, and then I reviewed the GL about um, capital planning committees. And what I'm gonna ask, and so there's a little bit of an explanation underneath some draft language to make a change to the CIPC bylaw for two things. One's quorum and one's the deadline to turn in applications. Because we keep running in, we, right now we have a December deadline, and we don't really even have a good idea of what the budgets are gonna look like until January. Um, but we've also experienced changes that happen relatively quickly, depending on whether there's outstanding grants or something else, that sort of predicate when we can, when we have requests ready. So it had come up, Mark and I had talked about it. So there's kind of an explanation about what I would, I'm gonna ask council for some language on quorum, but also maybe in five minutes tomorrow, capital could consider whether they might want to change a deadline um, or create some sort of a, a different framework for a deadline for capital requests because it seems to happen quite a bit. And I know it was changed before I got here to December 1st, or right around the time I got here, we changed it to, the, to December 1st. And it still seems to be a problem. It's something that Mark had asked me, if you don't want it in there, I still think we should consider if there's a quorum solution we can create. I mean, under the quorum solution, I mean, the quorum should be addressed because the committee is made up from different committees. Right, and if and we don't have people seated, right. in other words, we do, if we have vacancies, 
is there an allowance this is my question to council if we don't have if we do have vacancies is there an allowance if we put language in our bylaw that says we can do it because i don't see anything in the general laws that says we can't but i'm not the lawyer so okay. if we could make a change so that need, gave us that so the, flexibility the that would help right the quorum part would be important but in essence even though we have a deadline of december 1st we don't actually ever meet until we don't meet until January. Until January. So I, I'm not really sure why. I think it's still important to have a deadline of December 1st myself because then we get an idea of what's coming. And then we have accepted, because of circumstances, um, stuff that comes up because of emergencies or changes in operation or whatever. So maybe we say create some flexibility with language like that. Um, I mean, the practical thing is we don't meet on December 1st to decide the capital for the year. We meet as necessary, and we meet once uh, the finance gets going. The general idea with capital is to create some framework that can allow you to have a beginning and an end to annual capital requests before the beginning of the during the budget season. That's why I'm not season. really sure if changing the December deadline is, makes sense. Maybe there's a way to create some flexibility with other types of language. So I just wrote myself a note. I'll see if maybe we can get some info if you, from Lisa. Just think about it. If you said January 15th or January 30th, then you're still going to have people right. submitting late. You're going to still have people wanting to change. That's stuff. why I looked up what the general law said because I was curious, and there's also, ANF also put out a guidance document for capital planning, and I looked at that too. And really the intent is to create a framework to develop your annual budget. That's really the intent. All right, so let's So let's let me see what we can do One with other that. question, I mean, I sure. don't understand. Um, I haven't read all of the stuff that goes on to the Oh, the explanation. Page, but, um, I, I don't understand why the moderator appoints two people. It's actually how it's created in the bylaw. No, but I, yeah, I'm saying I don't like that bylaw. So okay. So for changing it, I I think that that um, the moderator has inordinate authority over certain things, and he's not. Well, I guess he is elected, but it's one of those offices that the person who does it is is a saint in some ways, but um, you know. It's not, it's, people think hard about a planning board member, they think hard about, well, I'm, maybe I'm not being fair to the moderator. Yeah, Dan, Dan does do some background and research for people that are interested in this, but you're right. He, there's two appointments, and he honestly will be the first to tell you, because he said this to me. It, it's been difficult to find somebody to sit on the committee, and to some extent, I think it's, it's volunteerism, too, because personnel board has the same problem. Right. So it's it's not we unusual. We all have the same problem trying to get right. volunteers. So if the bylaw could say, you know, five members, I mean, it's more realistic that five members might be found. Mm -hmm. um, now, one thing that they've tried to include in that bylaw is membership from, like, the planning board, yeah, the school finance. committee, the board of assessors, finance committee. Right. So that's, I think, the reason we have seven members. If we had a quorum allowance, a change in the language that reduces the quorum if the seated Position number of positions is sure. lower. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That could lessen the impact. That was really what I was thinking. Does that mm -hmm. make sense, Tim? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it, as I was, I basically think smaller, not necessarily going to three, but smaller boards are easier to fill. And I was actually wondering, like, the ZBA has two alternates to address the problem of. Yes. When they don't have, if you had a five, if you had a three-member board and two alternates, then you'd only need two people to be able to make a decision. Um, if if you had a problem, uh, but I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't thought about it a lot. I'm just yeah. blathering here. <laughs> no, but that's why I was thinking in terms of how to address yeah. quorum because that effectively does the same thing. Um, yeah. I, that's what I was thinking, but I was thinking about it in the context of quorum because that's how it came up at the CIPC sure. meeting last Thursday. Yeah. So I just wanted to give you an outline of what that meant. Um, so we got Article 20 is the amendment to the Community Preservation Committee, which includes change in membership, 
And it's actually pretty short, Tim. Yeah, no, I see that. Um, the gods were listening, and Matt Proventer is really awesome. He's mm -hmm. the one that drafted this for us. Yeah. Um, Kathy has it. Um, it basically allows for one of the changes is one resident of the town who does not currently hold elected or appointed office, nor currently serves as a municipal employee, who's interested in promoting affordable housing in the town, and it would be appointed by the select board. So we're maintaining the statutory required places, or the required yeah. um, appointees, but adding a bit of flexibility so that we could get an affordable housing person to right. see it, sit. Yep. Um, it also expands, well, I guess you'd have to be on the, the, the previous thing you had to be on the authority and yeah, so the only observation I had when I first read this and I, I don't feel strongly about it is does not currently hold elected or appointed office, but um, to some extent, this is just a thought, to some extent that could mean trying to open it up to people, to oh, yeah. other people, other oh, yeah, residents. Yeah, no, I, I, I see, um, I see, I see that that could yeah. be a positive in some sense. Right, I, I, that's. I don't object to it, I would just, you know. It's a question, yeah, yeah I hear you. So, you know what, that might be one thing that um, we put a tickler on to Matt talk to Lisa us. about. <laughs> Yes, I did. I sent him an email. <laughs> Good. So I thought, and I did make sure Kathy had it, so she's aware of it too. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so Article 21, this was something that came up at, a me at one of the meetings. We talked about the annual warrant, and this was a placeholder for the sale of land adjacent to the former, well, it's actually the former Oxford property, mm -hmm. Oxford Keynes property. Um, and I'm checking into this. Because I don't remember, Carolyn, did they incorporate this into the whole Oxford property? I had thought so, Casey. All right, I, because if I, they did, I'm going to ask Lisa about it. Because we had permission to sell that property. I just don't know if it included this piece of it. I'm pretty sure because... Um, if, we, if it did include it, you have permission. I, you may have permission uh, through the first vote. Yeah, but you'd have to look at the layout. So I actually contacted Randy Iser about that, and he's the one that indicated that we might want to go back and check this out. So I'm going to try to talk to Lisa about it. Yeah. Uh, it, that's why I have some of these comments in here, so I can remember to talk to her. I think that if it wasn't included, it was because it was you know, already town property. But, it was town property. So but either don't way. Forget, don't forget that um, you know, the highway garage was there, and we incorporated that mm -hmm. in there. So. That was why I was thinking that we incorporated that garage, you know, this extra building in there already. But but let's see. Yeah, so I just to wanted you it. to know that that came up, and okay. I'm going to have to ask a question. That's why there's a comment. Okay. Um, Article 22. This is the request to <clears throat> be able to convey the parcel that we would use for a for um, for affordable housing purposes. This is, well, this is a, basically the St. James property. Right, the old St. So once the Senior Housing Committee is ready to move forward with development, we have to be able to convey this to the developer. So this is the request the to article, do that. The article gave control to the select board, but it did not say that we could dispose, of the, dispose property. of the property. That's why we and, need this. And what happens is if we... We're taking notes on this for the yes, future, right? Right, because if the I, RFR yeah. goes out and we have find a qualified good developer, then we turn the property over to the developer to develop. It's because the town, it does not want to be a housing authority Correct. and run the property. The whole purpose is to put this property back on the tax roll and provide senior housing for seniors. Right, okay. so, so we do need the disposition on this. <laughs> and I don't think we were at the process point where we because we had to acquire we the property put, before we could turn it over to, dis, to yeah, but we do should the have, development. All we had to do was put one additional word into the, you know, the prior language, and we did. I I hadn't talked to Lisa about that, so it's there now. I don't know if we're yeah. going to need a registry of deeds notation or not, but if we don't, we may not need it. I know. Um, it's just that if we had copied the article from Sunderland, 
exactly then we would have it would have been given I didn't have any of that information I know so but we can fix it I mean Um, that's that's why we're doing it I know I think that and I did take as much language as I thought I could from the article in Sunderland um, yep because they had specific notations about what use and stuff was right well the the idea is you you know you're turning it over to like RDI, mm-hmm. you know, Rural Development Inc., where they, and they run, they would develop the property, and then they run the apartments, okay. you know, as our county housing authority. So I would just suggest that we say the select board deems appropriate, and then effectuate the disposition of said par- parcels, which it deems in the best interest of. I mean. I really hate the collective noun thing that the Brits do. You know, you're reading soccer uh, stories in the newspaper and they, Tottenham Hotspur, you know, are, or, you know, it's like, is, it's, uh, it's crazy. Anyway, but think about it. Hold on. I'm not saying that. I'm just reading it. You can read it two different ways, but we start out in the singular, we start out treating the select board as an individual item, and then it switches over to treating it as, a group a of group. collected select oh, board I members, see. and yeah, so it's like one or the other. I prefer the American way, which is <laughs> which is the collected. select board is a team. It's one thing. Okay, so you would like it to say deems appropriate. Yeah, and it's and which it deems and deems in the best interest. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's fine with me. Yeah. You just I, you, you know. just tell me how you want. The only thing is, it may be sometimes. The legal lawyer pe- lawyer people don't speak English or write English. Nope. That's why we can't understand them, and that's why we get into so much trouble. <laughs> you have that's to why s- I like Lisa because she's usually fairly straightforward. She she usually is, yeah. So it's job protection. Mm-hmm. Come on. Well, she gets it. I mean, sometimes yeah. it is it is no, hard no. to discern what's going on in legal language. I'll be the first to tell you because every time I have to look at the general laws, I will, question shall, it. may. Yes. No, I, I know. That's why um, I have to say um, yes. Lisa is really good. So Article 23 and 24, these are placeholders. I don't have answers yet, but these are placeholders to handle the eminent domain permission request for the Stillwater Bridge work. And I have to tell you, um, Chris and I had a meeting with DOT last week to discuss the Stillwater Bridge, and they produced an updated right-of-way plan set, and I've already sent it over to Lisa. We're going to need to do some work on it. We're going to need survey we're going to need appraisals we're going to need a lot of stuff but dot is anxious to make sure that we have permission to take by eminent domain whatever easements that we need to to do this for because stillwater road borders the the bridge itself we own land on either side because we own the low we i'm sorry we own the road on either side so this bridge reconstruction we have to do our part in it and they're just trying to make sure that we stick to a schedule. So Lisa and I had talked about it. Um, but she gonna, needed the new plan set so we could get further into it. I was just going to say, are we going to be prepared to explain? So I'm not sure. That's the thing. Um, we have the right-of-way plan set. We don't need to have final plans. That was the upshot. Right. Because we don't need to have final plans. What we need to be able to do is give people an understanding of what they would be looking at. And put the words as amended in there because at some point these right of, right of way plans will be amended as they refine the design because the design isn't final. Um, it's close, but it's not final. So, but they won't be going out to bid until late 25 into early 26. The only reason I, I'm nervous about this is because Nobody's going to vote imminent domain if we don't have everything specific. Well, I was going to ask, have all the potentially affected landowners been contacted at least? No. And so this is, this is what I mean about the process. You have to do that. Right. Um, 
I think DOT is concerned that we won't be able to get it done. Uh, yeah. On the other hand, there's this entire thing that we have to do before that. So okay. I put it on I, here. Gonna, I think we need to talk to Lisa about it, though. I, I want, want Article 23 and 24. Um, we'll decide by the 28th whether we're going to keep it on or not. Because it, and so we need to identify who is involved. Well, DCR, I know on the um, yes. One side is DCR and um, uh, Great Hydro. Mm -hmm. or who, yeah, those Quebec are the main Hydro, stakeholders. Whoever on, on the yep. south side. The north side is Great Hydro or Quebec Hydro, whoever they are now, on the one side. But then there is a private landowner. Yes. On the other yes. side by Lower Road. There so, is. Whose house? No. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's, well, it's actually, I think it's on the right of way plans. So I want to know, if we're going to keep this on, I want to know how much, and, and we reach out to these people and saying, are you aware kind of thing, and then what, what the issue is with them. I mean, I don't, DCR and Great River, or, uh, Quebec Hydro, whoever they are now, those three corners are fine. It's the private landowner. It's the private landowner yeah. on the lower road corner. And we need to make sure that we know exactly what we're doing before we go to town meeting. And plus there's not a lot of room from that corner to the house either. Right. That's, That's right. Area, and I and I'm not gonna support this. Here's the problem. If we don't support it, we don't get the bridge tree. I know, I know, but we need to support we need to figure out what we're asking people at the town meeting to to support right I mean the 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 businesses are not going to have a problem with this and I mean they might I don't even know if it's a possibility that they just give us an easement to the land so that we don't even have to own you know anything that's not directly a great a part of the bridge or, or, yeah the hydro co company isn't going to care and DCR is a state agency right. so so you just need to figure out right we need to figure that out and I'm the first to tell you it's it's too f I'm uncomfortable with how fluid it is on the other hand DOT is pushing us and and I certainly I'm the one that put all the effort to make sure that this bridge right. was is in repair this 20 million dollar cost is being paid for by the state well I mean so I'm certainly not going to screw that up but we need to be also thoughtful Right. Oh, oh I totally get impact. it. Yeah. I don't want people to get blindsided either. And one of the things and that I'm they not mentioned to us to is we meeting. have to do notifications. Right. But we can also have a special town meeting. Well, that's what I was going to ask. I mean, if we could. If we have to take it off, then we do have a special yeah. town meeting. We just have to take into account. We you know, know we're going to have There's costs related to that. So we already and know scheduling. we're going to have yeah. a special town meeting in the fall. But if we have to have a special town meeting, which costs about 2500 bucks versus $20 million, fine we right. can we can do it we you know even if we just identify who that landowner is and then I think we have I yeah. think it's on the right-of-way plan okay. um, yes there it's have, a big but, Adobe plan set that you can look at but we need to talk to that person okay and we need to make sure that we know they are aware of this impact that's happening okay right. and that they also need to know we need to know that um, we've reached out w with to them I right they're requiring it but i in the process they still want us to take this to town meeting now if we're not prepared to take it to town meeting that's an argument to take back to them it's just this i'm trying to meet to get you to the sure. point where we and can try to meet their that. expectations yep. because I know how important it is. So we've already And I'm not trying to keep people out of this conversation at all. It's yeah. just yeah. it's a process. Uh, yeah, basically we we have 3 weeks to decide right. and we'll, to we'll learn more. It. Yeah, we can sort it out. Yeah. So I'm just going to write myself a note that you may put you may want to put it off to a fall town meeting. Yeah. Or another special. I mean, if we had to have a special in the summer, Listen, we could do we, it. If we have to have a special town meeting, it's certainly with $20 million or $22 million on the line and, and more than 10 years of work to try to get this going, we certainly will do it. Yep. But I don't want to go to town meeting 
without and, this settled without okay. this being yeah. settled and uh, and certainly explain and it would be helpful if the person was willing to stand up and say do you understand what's going come, go, coming and yeah. and the reason why we're doing it yeah to say so I people, support this because I don't want to have to drive all the way around through Greenfield to get home if I'm in South Deerfield what he said right and the, and they support it because it, 20 million dollars on the tax rate is huge so and is it possible just to ex, just to explore an easement I, mean, I don't know I think it has to be done a certain way because yeah. of how it's designed but this is I'll be honest with you, Tim. This is my first time looking at something this large. Yeah. Easements, I've been through easement things with Lisa before, but this is a big project and it's a lot more complicated than I've experienced. So I, I, I own my ignorance here and I'm trying to learn what I can from DOT and sort of try to coordinate that. Well, so I, I, I don't really care about the hydro company and DCR. It's the land, I get that. It's, so it's one particular. In fact, some people might vote for it just because you can thumb your nose at the hydro people. Yeah. Plus, also get rid of that parking lot. Yeah. That, that, that's always overcrowded and dirty. Mm-hmm. trash and everything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. the last article it also relates to Stillwater, and that's a funding article because we need to be able to fund for the taking of the easements themselves. We have to pay a certain amount for those, um, but we're going to need surveys for that too and appraisals so again i know if i don't th if, if lisa tells me that we need to tell dot we're not ready then we're gonna is have that to figure article that out 25 that it's blank yes article 25 is just a mistake i was no actually article 24 is the article funding 24. Okay. To raise yeah i kept trying to make funds. it go away and it kept not liking none me. of this is free you have lawyer fees you yes. have yeah, right. survey fees yes. you have right filing fees with the but it's a lot D. less expensive than 20 million dollars uh, absolutely and and well, I think there's an argument million, to be made for that I know they're estimating 23 million or something yeah but we have been fighting for That's this this is our bridge this is our bridge we have to take on these expenses yeah. if we don't do it so I'm not arguing and so we're trying to balance make this happen yeah. yeah so yeah. we're trying to just balance what needs to happen right. to keep to their timeline yeah. That's all I'm saying is I we're trying to keep to their time. I have hundreds of hours of meetings into this action. Yeah, I remember. But I want to make sure that we're not looking yeah. like we're ram ramming something down. No, the but we also have to, we, like I said, we have to go through their I process. Know, I know, I know. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't really anticipate anybody having Arguing a problem with it. this. I right. don't either. Um, but, you know. No. I would. I would. It's their timeline that's a key domain piece unless of it. There is a good public reason. Well, this has got to be the best public reason you can have. Well, yeah, you, know, you don't to, have to go to through Greenfield your, to get home. Leave your town separated by a wa large water water body because I you, know, yeah, you can't afford it. Because one person, no. No, I, mean, I know, but still, yeah. you got to do the right thing. Two things I learned recently when I redid my ethics thing. The dry bridge is not fixed because that somebody broke the ethics conflict of interest rules. And the other thing is that at a movie I saw, there's an agency out there that will build a bridge in one day it's called the National Guard. So, yes. you know, um, the whole procurement process on bridges is crazy. They, they should have standard bridge designs for standard lengths of space and Every project gets individually engineered, like we've never experienced any of this before. So it's pretty complicated, um, and I don't disagree with you. So, so that's basically the outline what we're looking at now. Um, I have notes. I'm probably going to check in with you both, okay. but I also want to try to get this out by Monday at the latest because I'm gonna. I want to wait and see what Darius says. So if if Darius comes back and wants us to add an article, we're gonna have you guys are gonna have to open the warrant again next week. Yep, that's we didn't so open. just be prepared for yeah, that. Yeah, we didn't open it tonight, so yeah, we'll no, definitely no, you didn't well, open it tonight or the 20th, you mean? No, the 13th. I would oh. have you open it and open it and add the article. And I already drafted some language for it, I just need to hear what he's gonna say. Mm -hmm. So I would just present you with that language so you could review it. It just depends on what they decide tomorrow night. 
And I won't even be able to know that until Friday because we have CIPC tomorrow. Yep. Um, so you're um, just, these things were at the end of the package, the um, special events and personnel thing. Which yeah, those are regulations on. I'd like you to start taking a look at. Okay. Um, yeah, the really special had. event regulations, we're going to, because it's a road regulation, we're going to have to go through a notice process. So, mm -hmm. um, but you need to basically take a first read crack at it and review it. Okay. Um, what omnibus budgets um, besides the contracting did you want us to go over? Actually, I just wanted you to go over contracted services for now. Okay. Um, Is it in our packet? I didn't actually see no. it. Um, what I'm going to do... So basically the changes, and I'll let you look at it, but the number isn't right because I made the change and then I didn't fix the change. Um, so there's two numbers I need you to pay attention to. One is the network maintenance and the other is the... Website hosting? No, it's permitting software annual fee. So, the question here for both of those, um, right now you see 40,000, it's actually going to go down. It's going to go back to the 36,000 and stay there. Um, 30, initially, 33,000 or 36? 36. For, it was 36,000 before. Um, what one are you, what one are you talking about? Network maintenance? Network maintenance. It's it was, the first line. It was so 30, I had changed it to 40 because I was calculating it the wrong way, and I had a meeting with uh, Entree. Our, our rep at Entree, and we can leave it at 36, so that's a firm number now. Okay, because... The 40,000, I was playing with it, and I hit print so, too fast. Because I have the 40,000 still. So right, you do. So I, if you give me half a second, I will print it again. Yeah. No, but no, no, that's fine. No, the that's other right. one... I just want to check, because 2024 says 33,000, or else my eyes are not working. 33,000 was 2024. Okay. So, so it's, it, it, it's, this one went to 36, then yes. it went to 40, and now it's going back to 36. It's, well, I had postulated 40 before okay. I had the meeting. So um, okay. you would see 36,000 for FY25. Um, the other thing is, is remember at our last meeting, Julene noticed the permitting software annual fee hadn't been added. Right. So we have a conundrum. Um, so the permitting fee for inspections is 7860. Board of Health would be the same amount. So I right now it's 7860. It's actually it'd be a little over 15,000 for both those modules. Um, we are inspections goes online first and then we would do Board of Health. And Board of Health has more permitting needs like there's more Thanks, permits Rocky. that go through so my suggestion to the board and i will give this i don't that's why i wanted we to know have if you had, permitting free permitting software. right but we don't have permitting for all of the permits that get generated by the by valerie we don't have that no no the per, the um public health excellence grants pays for software Permitting. But we don't have that, Caroline. We don't have it. It is available for... So anyone. when we went through this with the ARPA funds, we asked if we could do this because we don't have in-house permitting. We have no way to do that. And both Trevor and I said we don't want to be working on two different systems. And it, right. this means one system. It and just means we have to put the, the additional yeah, 70 and 60 And the question in. I have is... Um, but I have an idea. Does the building department, all those fees go into the general fund or do they finance stuff in that? No, that it goes into the general fund and we appropriate from the general fund. And so we're talking about Board of Health needing this, right? So what we would do is I, when we have contracted services that cover operations mm -hmm. that are encompassing for town work, right. we put it in, we put those fees in contracted services. There's only one place in two departments that doesn't happen and one of it's a control thing one is board of assessors they do pay one thing but in this case most of our contracted services for any subscription fees goes in this budget mm -hmm. so i had an idea i had talked to brenda about it um if necessary we could make a cut 
in this budget and remove the $10,000 for the MVP consultant and use special funds as that source. No. That would alleviate some of the pressure of this, mm -hmm. the change in the budget, but it's not going to fill all the well, gaps. Well, it just, it's a huge, huge expense for the Board of Health. Well, when, one, when of, the we things I'd, one mean, of the things I'd like to do is figure out all of the costs of the Board of Health and set fees based on covering those costs. Right, Instead and we do need a permitting just system. Just making up a number and saying, okay, we're going to make up the balance. Because, because it does cost us money to not be able to produce these permits very quickly. And if we have a software system, it's going to be easier for everybody to do it. I, I just that people complain about the peak costs already. They do. This but is the, this is the, you know, everything is more expensive. Why should I pay six bucks for hummus I used to pay three bucks for from the same truck? Because we raised the price $10. And it affects, it gets disseminated, you know, gets spread. Spread over 150 people. So it's but just. But to your point, we, you have an obligation to keep public, yeah. to keep the public health. You know, I understand keep the public but, safe. I mean, we have a food truck that wants to come in and complain about, you know, the cost, and it's like, you know, don't come to town. Don't well, come to my town, point I is, is uh, this? Right. I mean, we it's do, like excise tax, right? I don't want to pay a high excise tax when I buy a new car, but I have to. And I just paid mine <laughs> for two years. <laughs> but to your point, there's ways that we could alleviate some of this it's because we do have a special fund that we could fund that MVP grant writing thing but functionally the cost to do business just keeps going up it's not we are not free we aren't held harmless from that any more than the private sector is. Right. and also yeah like uh, you know I, I can't see um, any of this changing I know we still have to give out permits for food service and a bunch of other things that are health permits. We're going to um, face the same trouble when we start, you know, are we going to raise the, are we going to go up in the, the what is it, the food tax? Yes. Are we so gonna, local option tax taxes, taxes if they pass. Go uh, are we going to inc yeah, increase our tax. excise? The meals tax. Well, there's a meals tax and then there's another thing that we could potentially opt into. Yeah. That the state is giving us authorization Room, to do. Uh, yeah. Is it's it real the empowerment. estate transfer? Or, In uh, the Empowerment Act. The, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, the, room, the room tax. The rooms okay. tax, and there's also this ability or a consideration of um, having a local option element of excise. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a, a pretty substantial conversation. Yeah, it is. Because effectively, that's again putting the burden of funding on your residents. Yep. Well, it's it's the trend that's been going on since Reagan. You know, don't tax the people who can afford it and pass on the difference to the people who can't afford it. And frankly, it's hard for everybody. I get it. Like I said, there's ways we can make some changes to the budget. It just means we have to use special funds as opposed to as far appropriation. As the, the grant MVP consultant is during this MVP 2.0 process is. Are, is the state paying those fees? Yes. So at least this year, that could be an easy thing, right? I mean, because we, we could cut two, it to 5,000. Yeah, or, or cut it to 1,000 and just have it in there and with a note that says this was reduced because the state paid the MVP consultants fees. For this for year years. and next year. Right. So maybe we cut it to 1,000 so we keep the placeholder. Remember, we did this with Board of Health. Or even 500. We could do that. Whatever. Yeah. Because yeah. I. Uh, the reason I'm bringing it to you is I want to make sure that we have this conversation because yeah. Brenda and I are trying every way we can. <laughs> I know, and, Casey, and I know it, it doesn't just seem like we, it to lowered, TV we land. We lowered the Board of Health expenses so that right. we could, you know, so it, we were trying to, to do offset. To create some balance and offset, right. and we get that. So that's what I was trying and to do is find a few places we can do that. And that's only temporary. Yes, so it is. And we can't help the cost of, you know, what it costs for our subscriptions for our accounting and financial software. You know, those are things we just can't control. Mm -hmm. Siemens goes, the Siemens bill goes up every year. It's not a huge bill, but it's there. Um, when is it going to go away? We don't know. We... I think in five more years or something. Like yeah, I think it's five 
years? Ugh, it was like a, it's a wicked. It was a wicked long. Yeah, it was like twenty five like years or like something. Like three thousand a year or something. Oh, there's a scene. That's, okay. It's yeah. Yeah. it goes up incrementally right. every year. Um, Hey, one of these years we're going to have so much money that we can just decide to pay off the Siemens contract all at once. And you know, they did that once. Yeah. <laughs> they paid They paid part of it off. Yeah. We did. So I just wanted to get a flavor of... So I could reduce the MVP consultant grant line to $1,000, and that helps it. it. It's not perfect, but it helps. Um, that's... Make sure you put in an explanation. And I've do, I've actually reduced training that, and professional that, development that there too. There is no that right. that um, MV, the MVP 2.0 for this year and next year are covered by are the you state. Talking fiscal year 24 and 25. Yeah. Right. So MVP fiscal 24 and 25 2.0. Make sure it's MVP 2.0 process for fiscal 24 and 25 are paid for by the state. For the consultant, yeah. yeah. For the consulting. Okay. And um, I wonder if the permitting software and the Board of Health software are from the same vendor? Yeah, yeah. So I'm wondering if there's... It's they, just like financial and town right. accountant. They're probably just gonna tell us, you know, no. Um, but it'd be worth asking, hey, can you give us a deal? like? Two softwares for um, for ten thousand. I can of, ask. Yeah, I don't and, and know say, that look, they will do it, have, but I can ask. Say we have an option on Board of Health for free, but we like the fact that we're working in the same suite. So can we get a break? I don't know. <laughs> I can ask. Never hurts to ask. Tim. Cheap. So okay, I just wanted <laughs> to go over those two <clears throat> things with you. I'm going to make a correction. I'll email this out to you. Okay. Well, um, the good thing is our number is going down percent. It is. It's going down. Um, I just needed to make sure. So there's a couple things you need to know about the managed IT. Um, we do have the request for the server. It's at 17,000. Um, we do have to upgrade our backup system. Mm -hmm. And so what you're going to see in that managed IT is we're going to make an adjustment to take on a better backup system. But overall we'll be making an adjustment in cost. We're also going to create, and this is going to make uh, Chris Nolan happy. We're going to, I finally, one of the reasons I got this settled is because I finally got the pricing for government suite mm. software, um, office software. Right. And it's not as expensive as the, prof the enterprise one, but it does provide us better security options, which is what I was looking for. Mm. So, it went up from the 33 to the 36, but we do get some advantage. There's some advantage to doing that. So, okay. just so you know. <sighs> okay. So you're going to send out a new... I'm going to send out a new copy. And now that we've had the conversation about, you know, certain elements, and I can put a notation in that, you know, grants are covering a portion of this, but it may go back up over the next fiscal year for 26. Mm -hmm. okay. Something to that effect. Um... Uh -huh. All right, so that's what I wanted to talk about in terms of the budget. Okay. Um, Chris, uh, Nolan, did you have um, any other updates from uh, as assistant town report, assistant administrator's town report? Yes. Um, you want me to go through that now? Sure. Okay. So let me navigate to that page. So I already talked about the Leary lot a bit. Um, there was a planning board meeting that had been scheduled for that hearing. We're continuing that to April so that there's time to make some final adjustments. Um, one of the most obvious ones that's going to change the site plan is the fact that the level three chargers are most likely going to require a slightly larger transformer than what's shown in the current plan. So that pad might be expanded a little bit. Uh, the approval not required plan for Hamshaw lumber's abutting parcel uh, did happen and from my conversation with Amy yesterday, it sounds like that was a smooth conversation um, and that was approved without issue. Um, let's see. Um, ARPA funding. So Casey had alluded to this earlier, but after receiving some mixed input from doing some legal research on whether our organization can use ARPA funding as we had originally intended for the Leary Lot project, 
as part of the 20% match that we're required to have for the CFI grant. Uh, I've requested a response from FHWA if that's possible because I've received mixed signals for whether it is or not. Um, so I'm working with Casey and Brenda on alternative solutions. Um, it, it's it's going to work out either way, but that might end up having to come out of a different funding category, and we would switch that with roads. I think is what is what Casey had referred to. Yes. Um, for funding from ARPA versus from capital stabilization. Um, we are the the hiring panel for the assistant town clerk position is meeting with our three finalists on Friday. Um, that's going to be good to see. We're we're excited about those because that's a position that definitely is uh, the vacancy is noticed. And Cassie does a terrific job. And uh, this, but she's drowning. Week is a good, this week is a good indication of how hard she's working. Yeah. So um, yeah, can't say enough good things. Procurement uh, as of when I wrote this report on Monday morning, um, three different individuals had requested copies of the RFP for the Senior Center for Administrative and Programming Space. That hasn't changed. I haven't gotten any new requests since then. Um, I haven't received any sealed proposals back. Uh, just as a reminder, the deadline for that is March 22nd at 2 p.m. Um, and I'm in my last two weeks of MCPPO training. So that's exciting. Good luck. <laughs> Comcast, I had a brief discussion with our new account executive last week about adding the South County EMS headquarters to the town's franchise agreement um, in the hope that we can start getting free internet service the way that we do for most of our facilities. Um, and I've been given a contact for somebody at Comcast's government division who should be able to assist with that. So I haven't successfully made contact with her yet, but hopefully we can we can get that settled because oh, we you're following you, up. That's what's important. Thank yeah. you. We want to start saving money in a place that's very low hanging fruit to do that. Yes. Um, MVP, I attended last week's info session from the MVP program staff, which was geared towards the communities, which included uh, culvert repair as a priority on their FY25 expressions of interest, which we were definitely one of them. Um, Planner and Economic Development Coordinator and myself met with MVP Consultant Chris Curtis and Regional Coordinator Andrew Smith for individual feedback on the proposals that were contained in our submitted EOI. Um, and we are also attending a webinar tomorrow for further info on the pre-RFR submittals. Um, and then finally, DOT, I attended two meetings on Friday. Um, one of them was at DOT headquarters where we talked about the intersection that we had a conversation about earlier in this meeting. Um, and then the other was with Casey and with Kevin Scarborough for the Stillwater Bridge replacement project that was also discussed earlier in this meeting. Um, so other than that, not much in the way of updates for y'all. Thank you, Chris. Chris, there's one, if you could, um, I wasn't on the, the MassDOT meeting um, email for the, the one that occurred at District 2, but um, I mm -hmm. do need to get in touch with one of the people. So uh, it was the gentleman who was sitting directly across from me when I mentioned the um, the, the unpermitted you know, road cut that goes through jurisdictional wetlands. I want to <laughs> follow up with him and flag up, you know, this needs to be, we need to get approval to remove this um, culvert and restore the land the way it should be. Um, okay. So if you could, I will see if I can find his contact info. I think I think everybody who was in that meeting um, was on the email chain that I got. So I'll yeah. I'll see if I can find that it for you. It was Bow. It was uh, uh, Mac Macanini or Macanini or okay. something like that. that. That's helpful because my first challenge was going to be remembering his name. Yes. <laughs> Sounds it wasn't Irish. Matt Minahan, was it? Minahan, that's it. It's Matt Minahan. Matt Minahan. Oh, I thought he was on the other side. Well, it doesn't matter. I'll, well, I'll, I'll put you in touch. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> if it was Matt, he's pretty easy to get a hold of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> At least for us, right, Chris? I know Sounds you. good. Thanks. Okay. I have a couple of things I just want to bring you up to date yes. on. Yes. So um, Thank you, Chris. So, Casey. You're so, on. I'll go fast. Um, okay. 1821 building. I've been working with John Watney at Structures North. We had a pre-bid walkthrough last Thursday, and we had several uh, bidders that attended. Um, he's going to address their questions in addenda. So what will happen is, is they'll send the questions. He'll provide the answers in an addendum. The bids are due on the 15th. Uh, we had to give them adequate time 
between questions and the walkthrough. So the other thing is I, di I am checking weekly with Dan Pallotta and Rob on the Tilton Library, Tim. Yep. So filed sub bids are due Friday. The general contractor bids are due the 20th, but if there's a change that requires answers and addenda, that could get pushed. Um, Dan doesn't know right now because they don't have filed sub bids in yet. Um, they are waiting for the second tranche of funding, but kudos to Candace, she had put it in. It just takes a little while to get it. Um, we will be receiving an updated cash flow, Brenda will, from Dan once we get the general contractor bids in on the after the 20, once they do the bid evaluation after the 20th. Um, and I sent out a question to Dan about the billing process um, because it seems to have come up again. So I'm gonna try to settle something before you guys meet again. Um, so the former St. James Church, we've got that under review. I'm still waiting for an answer from the property owner about certain elements of the agreement that I sent over. I haven't heard back from her. Um, the wastewater treatment plant, Trevor's not here, so he talked to me briefly this afternoon. The contractor has the documentation to do the stump removal. They're just scheduling it with the property owner. They've had some other things that they've been working on, but the equipment's still there. Um, one thing I found out is for the old Deerfield wastewater treatment plant upgrades project considerations, we, Trevor, I guess Trevor must have talked to Dave. We want to think about pursuing USDA funding. So Trevor's going to bring back a more robust update. But he did mention that to me, and I figured I had thought we would probably do it anyway, but I just wanted to throw it out there. And he's going to continue to work with Dave Prickett on answering some of those questions. Um, does the board want to, this is a STAM question. I have sort of been watching the Western Mass and Rural Conference and I wasn't, so the Western Mass Rural Conference, we've registered you guys. If you look in your right. email and in your that. boxes, I think you'll see the registration documents. Um, I'm gonna try to attend that. I've got myself scheduled to go. It is two days before town meeting. So we just need to be aware that sometimes we get changes between Friday and Monday. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna to have to do everything we can to limit those language changes on any of the guide, articles, whatever, to end on Friday so that we can concentrate on the rest of this stuff. Because there are, there are some robust pro programming things that we should listen to. So all three select board members are um, scheduled to attend. Myself, I think, Chris, you have a conflict, right? On the yes, 27th? I'm not available that day. Okay. Um, I think Christopher Dunn's registered, I'm registered, and Denise is registered. I don't know that Pat heard back from Lily though. Okay. The only reason um, I was suggesting Lily because there is going to be a housing component to yes. that. Yes. Yes. Um, under the new um, housing bond bill, there'll be some explanation, and I and we're hoping um, that we can advocate for a rural. A rural so factor. Factor that would support yep. our, like our senior housing here. Which campus. is what brings me to yeah. the question. So I'm going to send out the legislative affairs, the STAM version of, of priorities. I want you guys to look at them because a lot of my colleagues, their towns are buying into them. Um, and you've seen it before, but I think it does create something of a momentum for us as STAM as town administrators to get more connectivity with the state house so i'm going to send it out you guys take a look um, and maybe we could talk about it i don't have a meeting till next week on this rural aid what are we going to do kind of thing right so, but there's elements of that that include rural factors yeah, for a lot so of different things I, um, once we figure out what we're going to do to try to you know get this saved by the end of the session then we will maybe have to write another letter of support. Yep. So it obviously okay. any school, additional rural school right. funding. And so there's rural, the, we're one of these support. elements is trying to, the idea is keep it general, but allow people to sort of, allow towns to sort of voice their, their comments through their town administrators. We just, it's so disappointing. I just can't tell you. 
how much effort has gone into this. Yes. And, and a so, huge, we know that a huge amount of effort's gone into it. So anyway, we're going to so, try to resurrect it, but okay. I don't know how that's going to be. So that we might have, um, would, would, could I make a motion then if we come up with um, some kind of pathway, could a letter of support from the select board be written if it's between now and our meet, next meeting? You're looking at me. Yeah. Would you have a problem with that? I mean, it's just if a letter If we develop support. the letter and, and maybe use the oh, stamp you on your Would you authorize me and Casey to put a letter of support together? Sure. If we had to at the if last we had minute? To. Yeah. Make a motion to authorize you and Casey to put the... A letter of support together. For the rural aid. <laughs> yeah. For rural school aid. Okay. Yeah. If, if, if we don't have right. ability to meet. Yeah. If it's short notice. Yeah. So are you seconding my motion? Yes, I will second that. All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Carolyn Nassai. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I did want to say that everybody, financial staff, thank you for adding the warrant article about quarterly taxes. We do have to investigate whether the districts need to address similar language. So I've got a question out for Lisa. She's going to see if she can figure that out. We don't think we need to do it for, we don't think the fire districts need to do it. We're not sure about the water districts. Um, and I did make sure that I shared that information with Karen. So we've got multiple people investigating it. Oh, uh -huh. you know, speaking of letter of support, I, um, Elena had sent out a, yes. uh, Joe Comerford's aide had sent out a letter or an email asking us to, um, if we were interested in testifying, te testifying. So this would be for the housing bill. Yes. And this would, we would work with an intern in their office to develop a position paper. So I had suggested that um, Casey, myself, and Lily meet with this intern so that we could come up with a letter. Good idea. So would you would you be in support of that? Yeah. Okay. So I would make a motion that Lily, Dwight, as senior housing chair, myself, Casey, and the intern could also develop a letter of support for the housing Second. bond bill. Testify, testifying for. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Tim LGI. Carolyn Nassai. Sorry. It's just a, there's, there's a, a lot, lot going on. <laughs> there's a lot going on, and we're trying to close up this, oh, this yeah. session mm -hmm. with positive things for us, and it just, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and it's a lot of testifying, but I have to say it's worth it because we can influence stuff in Boston if we put the effort into it. It just takes a while. Trevor, we just voted to for uh, to do. They did a lot of voting. <laughs> support letters. Support letters for, for the rural rural school funding bill. Oh, if we good. can figure out a way forward, and also <laughs> um, a housing bond bill, to, allowing me to t to work together with Casey and the intern from Joe Comerford's office, if we can find some way to support housing for our senior center, our senior housing. If that's all right. It is the uh, okay. Because that's the, I mean, our school budget, um, because the transportation was up 4.65%. Yes. Um, the only thought we had was to use the rural f funding to bring it back down to three. But what we're doing is just digging a hole for next year because uh, without that funding, and we're worried about the state budget, Will they be able to fund it again at the same level? Um, you know, it's a five-year contract, so each year we have to come up with that amount of money, and it increases 5% a year for a COLA. So, um, so yeah, we definitely, definitely support continuing the rural school funding. Well, like I said, it was a lot of effort, and it was really disappointing, but we're, we're going to try to resurrect it, because there was over 200 towns that were in support of this. This was the... This was the busing contract with the local contractor. And yes. It went up eighty percent. Yes. Yes. And it, it, are we? Uh, are these done five years? Five year contracts. They are yes. done in five year contracts. Five year yep. and, and it's already been signed. No, it's going to be signed. I think it's the end of April. It's signed. Okay. Um, so there's more discussion at other school committee meetings. Um, Is there any thought of trying to find some other interested party? Uh, would love to, but they're, they went out to bid. It's the only bid. Right. So We're we don't very have limited other, in vendors. We don't have any other yeah. option, but they are looking at routes. Um, mm -hmm. There's a couple things they're going to try to do to see if, you know, see what we can do. Um, 
but it is kind of, you know, it was less than we thought last time it was signed. Um, and then they went through all of those expenses and stuff, but they couldn't, you know, we had a fuel surcharge that we paid each year, but I think they're trying to, and it is in market value when they look at um, the other schools that have their contracts as Busing well. Contracts. This is in line with everybody yes. else's. It's just. It's yeah. high. That Darius made that clear in his yeah. email. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's high for us, but it's where it's supposed to be for market rate. But um, it's still tough. You know, we have to try to maybe work with nonprofits and figure out how to help, you know, with, with um, see if there's any appetite to help us there, um, you know, by, by busing as well. So, um, you know, uh, it's about 75000 to run that route for a day. Um, I mean, for for a year, um, to the smaller, because that's the only one that can make it up to some of the nonprofits. So, you know, maybe there's a, a discussion to have there. I don't know. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a significant amount of money. And it's about 165 a year for a bus, and we have four buses. And um, so it's trying to just, you know, trying to look at it. But you're going, you know, for Frontier, they're going all the way out in Conway. All, like, all, yeah. just a big territory to it's cover. A, it's a very, it's, it's yeah. I think it's third behind Mohawk and Franklin. Mm, yeah, probably. Mohawk's was huge, too, and Franklin's was right up there with Mohawk's. Yep. But it's covering similar territory. So they're going to look at some ideas and stuff, and then we looked at using the rural school aid to, uh, you know, that we got this year to, um, <sighs> well, to, we were going to use it for um, the roundabout because that really needs to get done. Uh, but we're looking at reducing the budget instead, and then maybe I was going to talk to Kevin or have discussions. Is there any other funding source that we could help support that? roundabout way when we do the, the driveway, the the driveway part because we're doing the front end they have to pull the curb so they have to recut the the asphalt in the roundabout anyways to set the curb and then the rest of it is just falling apart the handicapped parking spots are just ice or a big puddle I know it's time to redo it and so it's just trying to find the money to do it and hence I keep saying we we really need to look at you know um a prop two and a half override to, to kind of set the budget. I mean, we, last time it was done is in the nineties, you know, we need to roll, we need to roll scams into it. You know, we just need to set our budget correctly so that we're putting money away in capital. We're, you know, we're funding things the way we need to fund them. This has been each year we cut because you can only go up two and a half. So each year we cut, 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 cut. Yeah, but and I'll, you're at the end. Also, remember that graft from the MMA I think it, that was one of the best graphs to explain what the situation is where rural aid. UGA our unrestricted mm -hmm. local aid from 2008 were same dollars we're yes. barely getting there right and that's not adjusted for inflation that's right. actually what we were getting in 2008 yeah and here we are in 2024 <clears throat> still cutting still cutting and right. who, who's made up the difference local taxpayer yeah that's it and and we haven't even raised the tax rate to cover that it's just been cutting service and cutting staff and cutting i mean we've added where we needed to because right. you have to run your town but it's time for a reckoning to go okay let's let's relook at how we run this town for the next 20 years Plus, we have all the mandates that we don't get funding for. That's true. And yeah. people don't like to hear the words unfunded mandate, but, but they are truly in is. place. They are. It, yeah. it creates a lot of burden for the local taxpayer yeah. because there's so many other things we're required to do. Yep. Yeah. So. Sorry, we interrupted you. No, no, right. it's fine. Um, there was just a couple of other yeah, things. So CIPC, they do have a meeting tomorrow, but if we don't have quorum, we're going to run into a problem. Um, no, I'm Denise, hoping we Denise have is back in town. So, um, Denise is planning to be here. Um, that's good. Let's see. There's one minute. Oh, so I had a conversation. We're going to see this in an upcoming meeting when we discuss budgets. But one thing, and I'd already talked to Chris Nolan about it, is so the electricity for the chargers we're putting in, we're going to. We're going to need to think about what the impact of those costs are because it's probably going to come up in a meeting. For us, we have the ability to balance through the Schedule Z. Um, 
but there still may be an outlay that we have to fund. So I just want to put that in front of you because it it didn't come up when we put the EV charger in in the parking lot the first time that that wasn't part of the entire process. Um, and frankly, I didn't I didn't know all the particulars. It wasn't they had put this grant forward before I I got here. But it's come up more than once in a conversation, and I just want to make sure that everybody understands that we're going to have to meet that expectation somehow. Um, Chris has assured me there's, and I know that we can balance a lot of this stuff in the Schedule Z, um, but we can only make changes to the Schedule Z twice a year. So we just need to be mindful of what some of these impacts are going to be. Okay. Yeah. Um, about that, we basically need maybe it exists maybe I've already received this but I work better thinking about stuff when I can say where is the money coming to make up whatever actual difference there is between usage fees and the cost of operating a, a resource so and so Chris that might be something that we think about we had talked about this in prep for you talking to capital tomorrow um, it might be something that we think about sort of outlining for them because then we could share that with the rest of the board later on. Sure. And I mean, a lot of this is very, very subject to change. Um, some of what I've indicated as estimates for cost are incredibly preliminary and I can, I can guarantee you're not going to stay that way. So um, it'll help to have a plan in place, but just want to remind everybody it is definitely going to change yeah right. and I, I actually think that once the level threes are in place um, there's going to be an increase in usage because there are large distances between Brattleboro and Northampton and another level three charger and if people are coming to treehouse thinking they're going to charge their car they're going to not charge their car there it only does 22 miles an hour so um, you know if you need a three a, a, 200 mile charge you're going to come into the leary lot yeah and bit and visit berkshire bro <laughs> yes that too right so yeah i that was one of my rebuttal comments is you know there's opportunities here yeah it's just i thought we might want to think about that and i wanted the board to hear me say that out loud because mm -hmm. it could come up tomorrow night <laughs> okay yeah. And he did remind me, I give Chris credit, he reminded me this is very, very preliminary and very yep. subject to change. Yep. Um, there is a couple announcements that I, f I forgot, Casey. I just. No, go ahead. Um, I was Frontier, pretty much done. The Frontier Girls Softball League um, has registration February 19th. Yeah, but. It, Monday? That was an old gone. one. Oh, it's. it's old. Old. Oh. Yeah, I had a baseball one too. Oh, yeah, this February is March. 19th. Yep. Right. Yep. So that's an old one. Yeah. All right. Um, the the other thing that I did want to bring up, though, that I forgot, is that we were supposed to next Thursday have a um, uh, hearing or a public meeting on the concept for the um, senior housing. It's going to be actually um, March 21st. Okay. So again, March 21st versus next week. Okay. For for which again? This is for the concepts design for um, senior housing for the St. James property. Oh, that'll be the 21st, you said? 21st, not next week. Okay. Um, they need another week, so we change it. Yeah, I can't believe that's February 19th. I didn't even register. I didn't even realize you it know was what? February 19th. Because February went by so fast. It did. Honest to God. Trevor's usually on top of these things. Uh, I know. <laughs> But the, that's why it, it got screwed up, because you weren't here, Trevor. <laughs> that's all right. Uh. All right. Um, anything else? So we just need to make sure that everybody's aware we have to, we are going to go over the warrant with Lisa next Wednesday at 5. Okay. And It's going to be Zoom, Trevor. It's, we're going we're yeah. gonna to do a Zoom. Because Lisa can't do it. I mean, she can, can only do Lisa's it Lisa's going to be on Zoom anyway, and I know there's other commitments you guys have, so. And she's only going to be but available But can I still do it, like, in here? Yeah. Somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, the other thing is we may have to have a meeting on the 21st, and mm -hmm. that's a special meeting. Okay. Um, there's some information about litigation that we're going to have that's to talk fine. about in executive session. Sounds good. Sounds good. Most of, a lot of my report actually happened while we were talking about the 
warrant and yep. I will have an updated contracted services um, budget that the board discussed a little bit earlier I'll fill you in on the details so um, I just real quick for me is that I had uh, we had our meeting at the um, sewer plant today for the update um, so we're moving along really good complete substantial completion which should be around May 1st and uh, final completion be the end of May and I talked to everybody about putting together um, ribbon cutting and uh, Waterline said he'd chip in for that get some dogs and some burgers and do yeah, a I was little... gonna ask about DPC yeah DPC is gonna gonna come as Contribute. well yeah they're gonna we're all no. gonna get together and we're all gonna put some money together and get a um, you know do a little cookout and a ribbon cutting and just to you know and uh, I, trying to see if there's any money left in it to just get a plaque you know for the building um that you know thanks the residents th thanks dpc the residents, and water line, DPC, and water line USDA. usda the select the sewer commissioners and um we should put something like on that for a big project like that so um they're looking to pull the stumps i think next week um he just been tied up with doing the other stuff the aeration tanks are pretty close the drainage is done there was a couple of boots that weren't the right size for the one of the manholes there uh, for the drainage that we were working on. Um, so he's just waiting for those, and then that should get backfilled and done. There's some stairs going up for the aeration tanks that need to be poured, but most it's going to be overseeding, cleaning up, and stuff. So there, there's some um, trap rock that we need to put down, and but it's really it's coming along. It's going to be pretty close to done. Um, talked a little bit about what we should do in old Deerfield some but I've got some ideas we could talk about I did mention but. that we might want to think about USDA whatever we come yeah. up with design yeah because you had mentioned it to and me I'll, I was uh, Hatfield so the main concern at old Deerfield is really the electrical the MCC uh, the electrical panel because if it fails there's no power and there's no backup and you can't get any parts that was the main issue down here as well so you know we were thinking um, Anyways, Hatfield is going out. To some partial bids were today, and then in a couple of weeks, there's more bids coming in. And I think they might have a better idea of what electrical is costing now, and just give us some idea of what that would be. If we did electrical, we could take some time on some other stuff. But anyways, he's got some ideas we could talk about in three weeks and come back and look at. That Dave Prickett, or yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was just saying he might. <laughs> you know, well, we're talking with really Eric. He's very concerned about the electrical. We thought, well, one way to do it is just start on the electrical and do, you know, phases. a contain a phased electrical container, get that done, and then whatever you do later, you've got a little, a little bit more time. Yeah, so. as, as long as whatever, if it's like a a, a circuit breaker box, right. you know, that's the the equivalent in the sewer world. It, exactly. You know, then you can readapt it to the final. Right. Uh, Yep, because you're going to build it no matter what anyways. You update that, and then whatever you do, Actually, you just tie it in. Right. And so we thought, and then Dave thought, you know, if uh, USDA, you know, if he gets a letter from DEP, we might get up to a 45% grant, you know, uh, right. because you're tackling smaller bites, and it's, you know, USDA is not going to come at us with a huge grant for a $15 million project, but a couple threes, you know, every few years might be something that we'd get more grant money for and um, to help everybody right. and do a more phased process. So we thought in a few weeks we'd get together and kind of lay out a well, plan could, a little bit. That could fit into the discussion I had with um, Eric Malloy and, it, and just, yes, you know, refocus their energies on, on yep. not the technology, but the funding. Yeah. Funding. yeah. How, and we how were thinking to too, and, like, and how do we make it also might address work? some of their concerns about yeah. trying to build a smaller plant. Well, if you do right. it in phases, like the electrical is exactly. going to be the electrical. No matter what right. you build. Or if you build it. an aeration tank and you don't start, you know, yep. you, you figure out what the proper size is Yeah. and just build that. And we discuss, well, maybe instead of a round clarifier, we extend the rectangulars. You know, we look at the balance between both of those. Is, right. there, a, is there a good way to kind of still get upgraded uh, clar clarifying but with bigger rectangles. And that, so. and that would be helpful if because then <coughs> under the MVP program you could truly do mm -hmm. flood resilience. Right. And that would be separate 
items that you yep. could do at one at a time and that and that would actually you could fund that through right. the grant right and then the, and with only a 20 percent match yeah that's hugely different yeah than paying what for did the eric Neal say about the um the chain link you know uh the the drag kind yeah. of thing um they're in bad shape they need to be upgraded for sure but he said that there is new technology that could to upgrade those clarifiers mm -hmm. so it's not a circular but right you know still still do the rectangulars right yeah, i think that's what they have in hatfield but they i think they made them a little bigger mm -hmm. um but just some so, ideas so, that go so over. what's what what's hatfield doing are they doing it piecemeal then or just a little bit yeah they've got they've got um I want to say it's maybe around, I could be wrong, maybe around $8 million project, but it's it's doing electrical and then there's some other clarifier work and stuff too, I think. I don't have it all down, but mm -hmm. it's not, um, but they're upgrading a bit and they really have needed to for a long time too, but I think they've got it passed and they're working with, I think they're working with USDA too. Dave's, and I think Waterline's bidding it as well. They're, they, um, they've been a good team for sure, so. Yeah, so I thought maybe in a few weeks we'd all get together, see what the bids came in, get an idea where we're at, you know, what we could do, and just start working on some ideas. Yeah, I, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, that's actually more doable, maybe. Yeah. It might be. It might be. At least, at yeah, least tackle the most dangerous part first, you know. Yeah, and I'm sure that, you know, once the electrical issue is not a big problem anymore, you know, if you take something offline for a few days to yeah. change the change the chains or whatever yep. you know um, or you build another square right. clarifier a brand new one yeah and then start working in there and then tear up this one and right yeah. well you can work around the school schedule because when the yep. kids are gone yeah you have a lot more time. just dra dramatically right. dropped yeah if you could so you could either do it summer or spring vacation right and that's what's been good down here we've been able to do sections at a time you know as we phase this mm -hmm. out down here and uh, we've been able to get one clarifier on work on the other one one clarifier goes off mm -hmm. we work on the other one and same with the aeration tanks now that we have them all split up mm -hmm. um it's going to look really nice when it's done there like, all I the walls spend are some higher. time there you know on yeah. a regular basis <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I have to say, it's it's interesting. It's an interesting. I bet you've seen a lot of difference, though. You know, going down there. Oh, for it's been amazing. Yeah, yeah, I've taken photos over the years, and mm -hmm. it's just fun to. Uh, I'll lo loop them all together at some point. I remember going down there and seeing that brown scum on the top of the water. Yep. Yeah. I think that's. Yeah. Yep. The cappuccino froth. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think uh, I think Chris is ready to go home. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's already at home, but he's ready. To right. Go he's home. ready to go yeah. to bed. Yeah. Um, Motion to adjourn. Yeah. Second. All those in favor. Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Nassau. Sorry, I got Thank you. bailed on yeah. you guys tonight. <laughs> just, uh, Recording no. stop.